The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. Tom Grieve, I'm Steve Busby. Glad you could join us on this Tuesday night of Rangers baseball. And it looks to be another dandy pitching matchup for the Rangers. It'll be uh, their best left-hander right now, and that's Martin Perez. Yeah, it's funny. This time of year, Buzz, the Rangers have some solid starters. Yeah. But right now, if you say you have to win a ball game, who do you want out there? you got to go with Martin Perez, I guess. He's won his last six starts. And in doing so, his ERA has been 276. Opponents have only hit 236 against him over that time. And he's beaten some good teams. He's beaten King Felix twice. He's beaten Chris Sale. He beat Bartolo Colon and the Oakland A's in the only game the Rangers won in that three-game series. So he's on a terrific roll right now, gaining confidence with every start. Yeah, and a pretty rarefied error, too, when you consider the people that his name is being associated with as he goes on on this streak of consecutive wins. So Martin will have his hands full tonight. The Pittsburgh Pirates are a good ball club. Elvis Andrews and company trying to find a way to get back into the win column as they take on the Pirates. Line up the first pitch right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Southwest is brought to you by the Built Ford Tub Sales Event at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, U-verse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. 
and by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. A great evening, a very comfortable evening here at Ranger Ballpark. Martin Perez and the Rangers have just taken the field as they get set to uh, try and slow down this uh, Pittsburgh team that won the ball game last night one to nothing. 16th shutout that the Pirates had thrown this year. And before we get things underway, Let's head down and check in with Emily Jones. Em? Well, Buzz, as you well know, 162 games is a lot of games over the course of the season. You're bound to hit some lulls as a team. This, of course, not the most opportune time for the Rangers to be going through one of those said lulls. Uh, dropping four of their last five games, a two-game deficit in the division, and uh, just 19 games to play. You might think there's a bit of a sense of urgency, but don't tell that to Ron Washington. I think when you start to think in sense of urgency, now you're making yourself try to get outside of what you want to do. All we're thinking about is uh, trying to play the best game we can tonight, and when tonight is over, are prepared to do the same thing the next day. And I think when you keep it in that type of perspective, uh, you don't put any added pressure on yourself. There's enough pressure. Ron Washington trying to keep things simple in tonight's Geico quote of the game. Buzz, back up to you and Tom. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, great point that... Uh... Ron Washington has left his mark on the Ranger organization with that kind of philosophy. And that philosophy. Exactly. Now the Pittsburgh Pirates batting order looks like this. Josh Harrison leads off. He's the second baseman. Jordy Mercer is the shortstop. Andrew McCutcheon bats third place center. Marlon Bird's in right. Gabby Sanchez to start at first. Russell Martin tonight DHs and hits sixth. Pedro Alvarez is at third. Jose Tabata is in left field. And the catcher is Tony Sanchez. And on the mound, Martin Perez. And for our progressive scouting report, we'll look at some facts. He's 9 and 3, 341 ERA in 15 starts. In five home starts this year, he's started on the road a lot more than he has at home. He's 2 and 1 with a 220 ERA and less than 15 pitches per inning. That's an excellent number for him and probably a lot better than in his previous stints with the Rangers. Right now he's been very efficient. Excellent command with his pitches, throwing a lot of quality strikes. And there is a quality strike to Josh Harrison from Martin Perez. Harrison leading off tonight. Did not play in last night's ball game. Saw the numbers for Harrison. 270 with three home runs, 13 driven in. And the next pitch is skied to right field. Alex Rios has started back momentarily, but plenty of time to get in and underneath it. And Harrison is retired. That is out number one. Take a look at the rest of the Ranger defense behind Martin Perez tonight. Gentry in left, Martin in center. And you saw Rios in right. Baker the start at first. Gensler and Andrews up the middle. Beltre at third. A.J. Brzezinski is catching the 22-year-old left-hander, Martin Perez. Crew tonight has uh, Jeff Kellogg behind the plate. Chad Fairchild at first, Paul Schreiber at second, Mike Malinsky is at third. Jeff Kellogg, by the way, the crew chief of this quartet. And first ball swinging, Jordy Mercer taps one foul. It is 0-1. He was definitely trying to get out in front of one. He had a 93-mile-an-hour <laughs> fastball right off the end of the bat. I thought it was a changeup the way he swung at it. He wasn't going to be late. Hits this one well to left center field. That is up the alley and at the wall. It's off the wall. Playing the carom. Leonis Martin gets it back in. And boy, Jordy Mercer has turned on that pitch. No, but uh, as far as he could in this ballpark and have it stay in the yard. That's the deepest part of the yard. It is a one out double here in the first inning. He's definitely up there looking for a fastball. He was out front of the first one. And that one came down the middle of the plate. And fortunately, it stayed in the ballpark. Well, Mercer now at second base, and now you run into the uh, the meat of the Pittsburgh order. Andrew McCutcheon, a 324 hitter, with 19 home runs, 76 driven in, and he hammers one high and deep to left field. Gentry is going back. He has a play on it at the track and makes the catch. Boy. Tagging his second, moving to third is Harrison. Or Mercer, I should say. And McCutcheon, a long out on the first pitch. I thought that. I thought he got that one. Made solid contact with it. Hit it about 385 feet, but 
did not get it well enough to get out of the ballpark, fortunately. Sure had that sound to it. Yeah. He, these guys are going up there looking fastball all the way. And he hit that good enough to be a home run sometime, some places, that's for sure. Yeah, the way McCutcheon left the uh, batter's box, yeah, he thought it was yeah, out. He, he thought it was gone. Martin thought it was gone the way he looked at it. Now the breeze uh, blowing in from left center field. So that was right into the teeth of this uh, you know, 10 or 12 mile an hour wind. It was high enough. The wind would have its full effect on it. So maybe that was enough to keep it in the yard. Now Marlon Bird up there. And he's first ball swinging. This has popped up. Shallow right field. Alex Rios, the right fielder, gets underneath it, puts it away. And some loud shots in the first inning. The Martin Perez strands the runner on a double. Nothing across for the Pirates. Rangers coming up in a scoreless ballgame. DeMontrant RV. Ian Kinsler leads off. Elvis Andrews is next, and it's Alex Rios. Adrian Beltre batting cleanup. A.J. Brzezinski is the catcher. Jeff Baker, the start at first. He hits six. Joey Butler gets the start at D.H. batting seventh. Greg Gentry in left field. Leonis Martin will bat ninth and play center. And on the mound, Francisco Liriano. Auto Nation scouting report. Shows some pretty good things. He's 15 and 7 with an ERA under 3 in 22 starts. One or fewer earned runs in 14 starts this year. It's only six home runs allowed. Fewest by any pitcher with 20 home with 20 starts. A lot of first ball swinging tonight. Gisler rifles one up the middle, but as the uh, second baseman Harrison shading him well up the middle, so it was right at him. And Kinsler is a hard out, number one. Yeah, that's a tough first at bat right there. You get a fastball to hit, you rip it. Looks like it's off the bat, right up the middle for a base hit. And there's the second baseman standing there in the middle of the shift to catch it. No one pitch, one away. Here's Elvis Andrews. Elvis at 267. You can see the uh, career numbers against Liriano. 0 for 11. And we got to remind you that uh, Liriano, when he was with the Twins, Really stifled the Rangers uh, most times that he pitched against them. And it's four and one coming into uh, play tonight with all those starts in a Twins uniform. The 1 0 pitch, a butt, and it's down the first baseline. It's rolling and just goes foul. And if it stays on the grass, oh it's a hit. Tony Sanchez out there, but he was far enough down the line where. All he could do was wait for it to go into foul territory and pick it up. That's the only way it would go foul. If it somehow started and stayed in the dirt, it would have stayed fair. If it stayed on the grass, it would have stayed fair. But it just barely rolls off the grass, and when it does, it kind of goes off that little ledge, and that pushes it to the right and just barely foul. 
just by that much. Boy. Oh, so close. Now we'll come back with a one ball, one strike count now to Elvis. And the pitch just outside, off speed pitch. Plum Liriano. Kind of an odd situation for Liriano this year. He's had his 23rd start tonight of the season. He has 22 decisions. Well, he's gotten a, a decision every time he's gone out there. Slowly hit out to second. Harrison flips on to first, and Elvis retired. Two gone for Alex Rios. Take a look at the Pirate defense tonight. Tabata is in left, McCutcheon in center, Bird in right. Gabby Sanchez at first, Harrison and Mercer up the middle. Pedro Alvarez at third, Tony Sanchez is catching, and Francisco Liriano, the 29-year-old left-hander from the Dominican Republic, is on the hill. Well, Liriano's had an excellent season. Got knocked around in his last start, though. Pitched three innings, gave up seven hits and seven runs at Milwaukee in a loss. One old pitch to Rios. Fouled straight back. Again, Lariano throwing that good changeup. Difficult for hitters, I would think, uh, to discern between the fastball and the changeup when he has both of them working. Also has a very sharp breaking ball. Here's a line drive. That's not going to be caught until it hits the ground. Well, Alex Rios continues his torrid streak. A two-out single here in the first. It'll bring up Adrian Beltre. Well, Alex Rios ripping his former teammate. They played together in the uh, with the White Sox last year. Now it's always a threat to go. A lot of Rangers are a threat to go. Elvis, Craig Gentry. Leonis Martin, Alex, he's had a lot of good base stealers. Not yeah. just guys that steal a lot of bases, but guys that have good percentages when they do it. Now, tonight's lineup, you'd have to say, and there's the look at uh, three of them in the top five. Andrews with 39, and Rios with 35, and Martin with 32. And you also want to throw Ian Kinsler and Craig Gentry in there, too. Five of the nine Ranger starters tonight. Very, very capable of swiping the base. At the drop of a hat. Yeah, Craig is 14 out of 17. All he needs to be in that group is a little more opportunity. One ball, one strike to Adrian, who's hitting 317. Got Rios at first with two outs here in the first. There goes Rios. The pitch is a strike. The throw to second, not nearly in time. Rios had a great jump on Lariano and uh, Sanchez. No chance to throw him out. The best, best thing Sanchez could have, do, could have done was just hold on to the ball. He had no chance. Throw it back to Liriano. Yeah, just throw him back. Or as I heard one uh, one catcher say, the best thing to do is throw it to third to make sure he cut him off. Can't keep going. So he can't keep going. That was about Ricky, Ricky Henderson when he was running. One and two now. The count to Adrian Beltre. Rangers is the first opportunity with a runner in scoring position tonight. And Beltre lines one to right field, but Bird over into the alley and makes the catch. Boy, Adrian hit that right on the nose, but nothing to show for it. Rangers get a hit, but Strander runner will go to the second. Scoreless in Arlington. The Rangers and the Pirates.
Rookie of the Year. We have given you five possibilities. Chris Archer down there in Tampa Bay and the Iglesias, the uh, shortstop now for the Tigers. We'll get to the other ones in just a minute. As Gabby Sanchez takes the strike. And Will Myers, the uh, outstanding outfielder for the Rays. How about Martin Perez? Nine wins tied for the most by the rookies on the left side. Dan Straley has the other nine spot for rookie pitchers. Let's go to Twitter and uh, hashtag FS and then the last name of the player you select for Rookie of the Year. We'll let you know later on in the game what the uh, opinions were. 1-1 one, one pitch, grounded wide of third, and Beltre gobbles it up, throw to Baker, one gone. Now Russell Martin will face Martin Perez. Perez gave up the one-out double in the first inning. Well, he had a lot of, a lot of guys going up there swinging before they ever got in the batter's box. They saw a fastball, whether they're on deck or in the box, they were hacking at it. And a breaking ball starts off Russell Martin. There you go. We'll prevent a lot of that. Martin at 237. And a little loop around in the shallow right. That's going to drop for a base hit in front of Alex Rio. So Martin got jammed, but was strong enough to loop it over Kinsler's head and in front of Rios for the one-out single. No, that was a good pitch. Dropped a breaking ball in there and then jammed him with a fastball. Not much you can do about that little blooper. Make the pitch you're trying to make. Got it in there. Big swing. And just dinked it over second base. But yeah. Soft single. Now Pedro Alvarez, the National League leader in home runs, steps up there. Left-handed hitter. He's dropped down a couple of spots in the batting order tonight with Martin Perez, the southpaw, facing the Pirates. Ripping a miss at the breaking ball. He's looking for a fastball to hit on the first <laughs> pitch, too. Glad he didn't throw him one. Alvarez had the game-winning hit last night, that sixth-inning double that followed up Marlon Byrd's double. The only blemish on the record of uh, Hugh Darvish last night. And that was enough as the Pirates made that one run stand up. A ball and a strike to Alvarez. There's you. And apparently no ill effects from the uh, cramp that he suffered last night. Perez sets the 1-1 pitch. Coming to Alvarez. Low and inside. It's 2-1. Alvarez, 88 RBI. He has torn apart interleague foes this year at a 357 clip. This is his 17th interleague contest of uh, 2013. Another breaking ball is low. It's three and one. So with one out, Alvarez trying to get aboard to join Russell Martin. Jose Tabata, the left fielder, waits in the on-deck circle. Perez goes to first and uh, drives Martin back. Ranger infield playing Alvarez well around to the right side. You see Elvis Andres on the first base side of second and pretty deep behind the back. 3-1 pitch. Now three and two. Well, that was a terrific fastball. Fastball count, you know he's looking for it. And he ran it right in on his fist. Mm -hmm. Good movement on it. 93 miles an hour. Good pitch. Yeah, even if you're a good fastball hitter, you can still, in fastball counts, have location defeat you. Sure can. Three-two pitch. That's low ball four. And they're now two aboard with a single and a walk for Tabata. And that's the walk that you didn't want to see Martin Perez have with the left-handed hitting Pedro Alvarez up there. Now, Jose Tabata is a right-handed hitter and uh, much more adept. And again, uh, quickly, the AT&T Twitter poll, the 
vote that you would suggest for Rookie of the Year. You have Archer and Iglesias, Myers, Perez, Martin Perez, and uh, Dan Straley. Hashtag FS, last name of the player. Archer, Iglesias, Myers, Perez, or Straley. And we will uh, get all that information off of Twitter and tabulate the results, get it back to you later on tonight. Fastball tails outside to Tabata. It's one ball and no strikes. 275 the average. Tabata, four home runs, 25 driven in. And Elvis Andrews in to pass along some information to Martin Perez. I've seen Elvis do that once or twice in each of the last couple of starts that uh, Perez has had. Developing the kind of rapport you like to see an infielder have with starting pitchers. Pitch upstairs with a changeup. He swung through it. It's one and one. Hey, that's what Elvis told him. Throw him, throw him a high changeup, about shoulder high, and he'll swing at it. He was right. <laughs> if that's Glad what he, told he didn't him. hit it. <laughs> Dabata hitting out of that open stance as Brzezinski throws out the signs. Pickoff play at second. Oh, Kinsler. Great reactions by Ian. He had to dive across the uh, body of Russell Martin just to get a glove tip on that ball. It prevented it from going into center field and possibly from advancing Martin 90 feet. The, the best pickoff play at second is to, is to throw it into center field. Let the guy go to third and just have Martin throw him out at third. <laughs> there you go. Just deep him into going. Yeah. <laughs> and thought of that. Planned play. 1-1 one, one pitch. Could be a double play ball to Kinsley. Andrews. Back to Baker. 4-6-3. That was what Elvis told him to do. And he got it done on that pitch. One left on a hit and a walk. We're going to the bottom of the second. No score. Rangers and Pirates. baseball everywhere you go. It's available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10 at Bat Delivers Rangers Baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and a whole lot more. Just text at bat to 31826 or visit TexasRangers.com for details. Now that That's is a, a bowl of ice cream. I think it's a taco salad. Is that a salad? Yeah, I think it's a salad. I, I, was, I asked the same thing. I said, that's the biggest Sunday, biggest Sunday I've ever seen. Usually you get those little baby helmets. That's a regular size helmet right there. Yeah, there it is. Nachos. Emily Jones was the one that uh, straightened us out on that. She went and did some I wonder research. if Emily's tried one of those before. <laughs> yeah, they're the... 
They're the awesome Rossum nachos. They're, awesome Rossum? They're named after Robbie Ross. Ah, yeah. okay. They're, That's the pink helmet, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Good. It's the awesome Rossum nachos. That was the pink helmet he took with Listen, have backpack. you guys not checked out my appetite lately? Pre-pregnancy and post-pregnancy, it's still there. I've tried just about everything on the menu. You know, we, the weren't gonna, we weren't going to mention that to you, today, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's All good. that stuff that costs 26 bucks, I've, I've sampled pretty much <laughs> <Yeah>. everything. <laughs> well, I, I, we knew that if anybody in the ballpark had understood that, it would be you. So that's... I'm your go-to girl in terms yep. of food. There you go. Sure. You can count on me, fellas. <laughs> 0-2 pitch to Brzezinski, and he has gone on strikes. Loriano gets his first punch out of the evening. A.J. back to the dugout. One away. Jeff Baker coming up. Yeah, Liriano pretty much is a guy throughout his career who's struck out at least a batter for inning. This year coming into the game, 139 strikeouts and 136 innings. Had a terrific start to his career with the Twins. Then he got hurt, missed part of the season. Last couple of years, his ERA has been over five. In fact, three out of his last four years, he's had an ERA well over five. So since 2006 with the Twins, this is by far his best year. Great pickup for the Pirates. When you yep. Pick up a guy that's relatively available and get this kind of a season. A loop out in the shallow left center. That's going to fall for a base hit. So Jeff Baker. It's a. Uh, Aboard on that soft base hit. One out, Joey Butler coming up. Well, second hit of the night for the Rangers. You know, in many cases, m most good teams have a guy like this, though. The A's have Bartolo Colon. They picked him up a couple of years. Anybody could have had Bartolo Colon. Right. I'm not saying anybody could have had Liriano, but he was somewhat available. A lot more available than he would have been if someone thought he was going to go 15 and 7 with a 298 ERA. Memory serves, he didn't sign until late in the offseason. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Yeah, it was February, first week in February this yeah, last year. Right before spring training. Yeah. So, yeah, anybody could have had him. 0 and 1, the count to Joy Butler. And again, he's coming off two years where his ERA was over five. Mm hmm. Now, Lariano originally came up with the Twins, but. You remember he was in that trade that from San Francisco he came over along with Joe Nathan in exchange for A.J. Pruszynski. It was back in the offseason after the 03 season. That kind of changed the balance of power and as far as the Twins were concerned getting Nathan who was a starter with the Giants. They the got game, another the closer. Who was the other guy? Boop Bonser. Boop Bonser. They, and he was a, at the time a very good prospect. Yeah. He Pitched in the big leagues, never really blossomed, but at the time of that trade, he was a good prospect. The rip and a miss, and Butler gone on strike. Second punch out for Liriano. Two away, and Craig Gentry now will step in. A tough guy for a young hitter who's going up there looking for fastballs, being aggressive, getting an opportunity to face a guy with a really good changeup like that. But Joey's seen him at least, so the next time up he might be a little more prepared to hit that changeup. You ever get prepared to hit a good changeup like that? No, <laughs> I guess I might not have missed it by quite as much, but I don't think I ever got prepared to really do any damage to it. First pitch to Gentry is high and outside for ball one. But all I could say was, well, at least I didn't look as bad as I did last time. There you go. There you go. The announcers probably said something like, well, wasn't good, but he's getting closer. <laughs> Cut that down. He missed by four inches yeah. instead of a foot. Kind of like the Greyhounds chasing that rabbit. Getting closer, but you never quite get there. That's pretty much <laughs> me hitting a changeup. I always thought that a pitcher with a good fastball with good command and a really good changeup was the hardest pitcher for me to hit. I would think so. If you're... If you like to hit a good fastball, mm -hmm. and you can hit a good fastball, yeah, I, I would think that would be tough. One and one to Gentry. Drops a butt down, and it's a good one. Stepping up is, is uh, Sanchez. The throw is late. Gentry able to leg that out. That is as well as that can be played by a catcher. I'll say. Tony Sanchez got on that ball very quickly, made a strong, accurate throw, and still didn't get him by 
oh, almost a full step. Yeah, and I'm not sure that he would have fielded that if he knew how fast Gentry was. I, I think he fielded it. looked like it was going to go foul. I think he fielded it because he knows how well he can make that play. And generally, he's going to throw the guy out. He just had Craig Gentry running. He's probably a little bit surprised that yeah. he could make the play like that and not get the guy at first base. But that ball was definitely going to go foul. Yeah, you're right. And I would say probably maybe anybody else except Martin. And he would have been out. So two on now with two outs. And here he is, Leonis Martin. And he rips through the off-speed pitch. It is nothing and one. Leonis at 266. See the numbers there with 37 RBI. He's got Baker at second base. And Gentry at first with two outs. Left-hander back to the plate. Low one outside. Sanchez doing a pretty good job of getting out there to take care of that low pitch. This ball is going to hit on the edge of the grass. And it would have been just like Elvis's bunt. Right there, that ball is going to go foul. The umpire is right on top of yeah. it. I, think it I, right. I don't think he had a problem whether it was going to stay fair or foul. He right. probably knew it was going to go foul. He just wanted to catch it because he thought he was going to get him out at first. Yeah, and I, I think that's exactly right. Watching that replay, and it looked like he committed himself to making the play with very little thought for it. Well, yeah. maybe I'll just let it go. Yeah. There was no indecision in that play. I mean, he, he probably knew that Craig could run well, but I think when he fired that ball the first, he was a little bit surprised that Craig beat it out. And judging, also watching him make that play, I don't blame him for yeah. feeling that way. It looked yeah. like a shortstop making that play. It looked like Pudge. Two and one, the count to Martin. And the count is now even at two balls and two strikes. In the last ten ball games, Rangers uh, kind of fallen back into that hole again. 171 with runners in scoring position. Yeah, Baker out there at second, Gentry at first. Odd part about it is the Rangers have scored the second most runs per game in the American League since the latter part of July. They trail only Boston. Round ball to the right side, and second baseman Harrison up with it. On to first, that'll do it. Now the Rangers get a couple of hits, but strand two. We have finished two here in Arlington. Rangers nothing, Pirates nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Joining us now, it's Tuesday, we're at home. It is uh, Ranger CEO Nolan Ryan. Nolan, appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Maybe we can uh, find a way to score a run or two tonight. It'd be, uh, be a little more interesting that way. Well, yeah, it sure would. <laughs> 
No, it's the president. Papa, Papa John pizzas. They haven't been giving any of those half pipe pizzas away no. lately. <laughs> no. <laughs> Seven has been pretty safe. Yeah. Notice the president's with you. Did he promise uh, some runs to come on hey, out? He told me he got tired of waiting for us to break out, so he said he'd guarantee us two <laughs> runs tonight. Okay. All right. So we're counting on it. We're, we're going to use them. You know, normally two wouldn't sound like much, but after last night, that sounds like a whole That's lot. That's right. It sounds like a whole lot compared to what we've been doing. If you ever think you'd see a run like this, uh, you know, the way this ball club looked at the start of the year, it didn't look like it was going to be an earth shaker, but at least at home, be a competitive runs-wise, going through a terrible time that they have this year. Well, you know, it's been a strange year uh, for our home. For our for us at home, we haven't uh, scored that much this year at home, and uh, our record isn't. Normally, our record was so strong at home, and this year it hasn't been. It's probably one of the uh, worst records we've had as far as our home schedule. That's a fair ball down the left field line. Sanchez turning on that high pitch and he's going to be on with a leadoff double second double for the Pirates tonight against Martin Perez Perez doesn't seem to have as much command tonight as he had uh, in his last start he has a tendency to get the ball up leave it in the middle of the zone a little more tonight yeah, that's a good example of it right there a high change up right, right down the middle of the plate Well, third hit of the night, second extra base hit. And with Sanchez at second now, the uh, Pirates go back to the top of the order. Josh Harrison, a fly ball to right, back in the first inning. Showing bunt, and Harrison uh, did not offer at it, according to first base umpire Chad Fairchild. Asked on the appeal. Well, no one... Uh, yeah, you know, the Rangers haven't haven't uh, done all that well scoring at home, but they've been pitching well at home, which is you know that's a, that's unusual too, where they're pitching better at home than they have been on the road. Well, they really have, and and when you look at our pitching, you know, uh, with the the lack of run production, uh, our pitching's kept us in the game, really put us in position to win a lot of ball games, and a uh, good example of that was last night. And uh, you pitched probably as strong a game as he pitched quite a while and, and the command he had and, and how efficient he was I think he threw 81 pitches in mm -hmm. six innings and so I mean he was really uh, sharp last night Nolan I, I know that Martin has been one of our best young prospects but are you at all surprised how well he has put it together late in the season like this the yeah, winning streak that I, he's on? I really am because uh, the one thing that uh, you knew he had three legitimate pitches and what you uh, hoped for was the consistency uh, with those pitches, and he has really come on the second half with it. And there's a little looping drive to left. That's in for a base hit. Gentry gets to the ball quickly, and so Tony Sanchez will stop at third. And well, Jordy Mercer, two for two tonight, a single now, and he had a double in the first inning. The Pirates with runners at first and third, one out for Andrew McCutcheon. I tell you, with McCutcheon, not when he hit that ball left center, I really thought he'd hit it out. We did, too. I mean, it had all the earmarks of it, and it sounded like it, too, when he hit it, and he just died out there at the track. Reverse jet stream. Yeah, we needed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and third, McCutcheon, as uh, Nolan was telling you, out on that long fly ball to left center. Now in a tough spot for Martin Perez. Breaking ball just missed inside. It's one and zero. Oh. This is a tough guy to double up to. The only mm -hmm. only good thing is he hits the ball hard. So if he does hit it at one of the infielders, we've got a shot at it. Change up. That just catches the outside corner. You know, knowing there used to be a a thought that uh, the National League and, and American League were so different as far as the hitters approach is much more of a fastball league than the National League. This Pirate team, just judging from the last two nights, seems to fall back into that category. They love to hit fastballs. Yeah, they really are. I think if, if, if you had to summarize them, you'd say they're a fastball hitting ball club. And uh, uh, that's the old type Pirates clubs that uh, when I broke in, they were 
all power, all fastball hitters, and that's what they look for. Mm -hmm. And they would go deep in the count, you know, waiting to get their pitch. Up the middle off yeah. Perez. He's going to try to come to the plate, and the throw is late. The run scores, moving from second to third now for the ball gets away, is Jordy Mercer. And the Pirates take a one to nothing lead, and A.J. Przinsky is going to say that he never stepped on the plate. And home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg right there pointing down at the plate said, yes, he got the plate going by. And he did call him safe when, uh, as the play developed. Well, Perez almost, almost had a, uh, a gift of getting that play back at home. You know, watching that, watching that replay, it, I can see why AJ might have uh, might have questioned that call a little bit. Yeah, it, it looked like he stepped on his foot. Yeah, I don't think he touched the plate either. Let's see if we can get a different angle. Now Never touched it. He's right. Never touched the plate. AJ was correct. Stepped right on his foot. Yeah, Tony Sanchez never got never got that left foot on the plate. It was on AJ's foot. Now, yeah, yeah, he was tough call for Jeff Kellogg. And even though he had the he had the best angle at it right there, he still saw that the play developed the way it did. So the Pirates take a one to nothing lead, infield single and an RBI for Andrew McCutcheon. Still runners at the corners. Still just one out. And Marlon Bird now will come up for his second at bat. It was actually a pretty heads up play by Perez. He, to try it there. He didn't have a play anywhere else and almost pulled it off. A rip and a miss by Bird. So the base hit and then the uh, error charge to A.J. Przinsky allowing Jordy Mercer to advance an extra 90 feet going from second to third. 0-1 pitch. Little looper out toward Ian Kinsler. Makes the grab and that is out number two. Thought about trying to get McCutcheon but he wasn't that far off. Now Gabby Sanchez will come up. Big pitch right there by Martin. You've got Marlon Bird up there having his best season, swinging the bat pretty well. And he just sawed him off with that little blooper with a man on third and only one out. Ran it right in on his fist. Good pitch. Sanchez, a ground ball to third, his first time up there. Outside, one ball, no strikes. But Nolan, are you a little surprised at going thinking back over the year, but all the injuries to the pitching staff that it has turned out to be such a good year, and we're talking about the best year uh, statistically since, you know, back in 83 or so. Well, I really am, because if you'd have told me we were going to have some of the injuries that we had, You'd have thought, well, it's going to be a tough year on the rotation, and uh, we're not going to have the type of rotation that we thought we would. So there's been some people uh, like Martina has stepped up for us. Yeah. No, I appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, enjoy it, and hopefully we'll get a couple more runs with the president's help. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. one nothing Pirates as we go to the bottom of the third inning.
Rangers trying to uh, counter in their half of inning number three. It'll be the top of the order. Ian Kinsler, Elvis Andrews, Alex Rios. to be the first three to do the swing against Francisco Liriano. And Ian takes a pitch at the knees. The straight changeup, it looked like. Nothing in one. Ian lined out to the second baseman, Harrison. First pitch he saw from Liriano, he had a bullet right back up the middle, but Harrison was shading him that way. And caught the ball almost behind the back. Another changeup, nothing in two now, the count. A couple of birthdays to mention. Flora Bronner is 91 years old today. Nadine Berry from Anderson, Texas, is 94 years old today. Happy birthday, Flora. Happy birthday, Nadine. 0-2, and he is gone. Three-pitch strikeout, number three for Lariano tonight. And Elvis Andrews coming up, and let's welcome him to Jim Knox, Jim. I appreciate it, Buzz. Big happenings before the game this evening. Texas Rangers baseball fan nation down on the field presenting grants of over $80,000 to baseball and softball organizations in the Rangers territory to find out more about this and the grants and every, all the good things going on with the Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation. Log on to TexasRangers.com slash grant. Buzz? All right, Jim, thank you. Elvis running up as if to bunt, and that brought... Alvarez racing down the line from third, but Elvis took it for ball one. Elvis tried to bunt his first time up, and uh, it just trickled off foul. He would have had a base hit if it stayed on the chalk, but it didn't. He ended up grounding out to second. Pitch on the outside corner. That evens the count at one and one. He's definitely got one of those change-ups that he can throw one right after the other, and he can still make you chase it. Fastball and uh, again Elvis running up as if to bunt. Pretty good complimentary pitches. That 95 mile an hour fastball with pretty good late movement to it. And a changeup that's anywhere from 86 to 88. And it looks like he has the same kind of motion with both of them. That shot to the right side and through for a base hit. Well, Elvis with his 39 steals is at first. His first hit of the night. Rangers with their fourth hit. And we'll bring up Alex Rios. Now let's take time here for a Mazda game break with Dana Larson. Dana? All right, Dana, thank you. Elvis at first, one out. Alex Rios, who singled his first time, is at the plate. And they've got Elvis picked off. Sanchez to Mercer. Now back to Liriano, who's going to chase Elvis down and catch him. Well, Elvis caught right in the middle of his jump. He was just he was leaving on the first sign that he saw of any movement from Liriano. Unfortunately, that movement was to first base. Now the caught stealing erases Elvis. Now two gone. And Alex Rios will be up there with the bases empty. Pitch low and inside for ball one. Elvis now uh, seven. Caught stealing this year, and he taking that glove off rather gingerly in that right wrist. See if he can uh, fastball low and outside. Looks like he's right thumb. He's, uh, trying to coax back into feeling. Fastball strike. It's two and one to Rios. Alex currently hitting at 282. He has extended his hitting streak now to three games with that first inning single. It's this one high in the air to center field, not carrying very far. Andrew McCutcheon backpedals a step or two, makes the grab, 
And that'll do it. The Rangers get a hit, but Elvis caught trying to swipe second base. We're going to the fourth inning. The Pirates won. The Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. you by the Built for Tub Sales Event and by Jack in the Box. Now the fourth inning begins with Russell Martin, the designated hitter, taking strike one from Martin Perez. Pirates leading one to nothing, scoring a run on three hits in the third inning. Perez dropping in that slow hook to the outside corner. It's nothing and two. Martin, a one-out single to right field in the second inning. Another breaking ball. See you later. You know, Russell Martin got caught window shopping as Martin Perez brings up his first strikeout of the night. Yeah, good breaking ball. Got him looking. Dropped it right on the outside part of the plate. One wedding anniversary today. Keith and 1L Mike Smurf. Mike Smurf from Midland. 62nd wedding anniversary today. Congratulations to Keith and 1L Mike Smurf. From Midland, Texas. Now Pedro Alvarez will swing at the first pitch and chop and foul. It's nothing in one. Alvarez walked in the second inning that preceded the ground ball double play off the bat of Tabata. Perez with the 0 1. And the count is even. Martin, as you can see, a very manageable pitch count, as he usually does have. He's not one to throw an awful lot of pitches. It's fouled away to the left by Alvarez, and the count moves to one and two. Take a look at the uh, Ford leaderboard tonight, and we'll tell you the uh, rookie starters ERA in Rangers history. You go back to uh, Steve Comer in 1978, the lowest of 3.12. A swing and a miss by Alvarez. And Martin Perez back to back strikeout. Jim Bibby in 73 and a 332. And Martin Perez down there just following Kevin Brown. 341 coming into tonight for Martin Perez. And the second strikeout with a good curveball. Big swing by Alvarez, but a well located curveball by Martin. Second strikeout. Yeah, one of the one of the reasons that Martin has been able to pitch deep in the ballgame is what you're talking about, Buzz, the fact that he throws. A lot of strikes and is very efficient with his pitch count. Mm -hmm. but in his last seven starts, he's averaged seven innings per start. That's pretty good for a rookie pitcher nowadays. Sure pretty good for any kind of pitcher nowadays. Nowadays it is, <laughs> for sure. 
Dabita, as we mentioned, grounded into that double play first time. And he hits a line drive. Up the ladder goes Kinsler. And he comes down with a baseball. Well-timed leap by Ian, and that will do it. A pair of strikeouts. And a very good defensive play by Kinsler. Three up, three down. One nothing Pirates. Rangers Ballpark and I like on Saturday, November the 9th. The lineup includes the Eli Young Band and the Josh Abbott Band, Thompson Square, and Easton Corbin. Tickets start at just $25, but get yours early because prices will go up on the 14th of September. Go to TexasRangers.com slash Eli Young Band for tickets. Well, the Pirates leading one to nothing. Rangers coming to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. They'll have the middle third of the order to face Francisco Liriano. Adrian Beltre, A.J. Pruszynski, and Jeff Baker. Beltre lined out sharply to the right fielder, Marlon Byrd, in the first inning. He had a one-for-four night in last night's game, but Adrian, by his own admission, struggling lately, and those numbers would tell you Exactly that. Very un Beltre like. Next pitch, a little bit low. It's two and nothing. If you had to look at one thing that Liriano has done a lot better this year than the last two years, and that's throw strikes. Last two years, he's averaged five walks per nine innings. This year, it's significantly less than that. It's a little more than three walks per nine innings, but much better than five. So a lot fewer base runners. Beltre chops one foul, and it's two and one. Yeah, it seemed like he had those one of those reputation that uh, you hate to get if you're a pitcher, and that's other teams felt if you stayed close to him, he was going to do something to beat himself, and it usually revolved around a walk somewhere. Well, so far today, we haven't had a walk, so no. that's a better part of his season this year. Lariano's 2-1 pitch. And the count is three and one. So Adrian tried to get the Rangers off on the right foot here in the fourth inning. Get aboard to, to lead things off. He'll be followed by A.J. Przinski. Rangers have not had their leadoff man aboard in the first three innings tonight. 3-1 pitch. Breaking ball bends in and it's three and two. A little preparation as he steps back in. Payoff pitch coming to it. Inside ball four. And Beltre draws that leadoff walk. There you go. And he definitely didn't want to throw him a fastball three and one or three and two. And Adrian was patient. Took the walk. Well, the first pass issued tonight by Lariano. Now he'll face A.J. Brzezinski. 
AJ went down swinging on three pitches his first time to the plate. 279, the overall season average for the Ranger catcher. Check swing and pitch runs off the plate inside. One ball, no strikes. Krasinski has had you know, better than average success for a left-handed hitter against Liriano. He's uh, 6 out of 22. That's a 273 average. 1-0 pitch to him. On the ground, right at the bag of fair ball. The throw to second, and they get Adrian Beltrade. Wasn't sure if uh, I don't think he tagged Sanchez first. Sanchez stepped on first first. I don't think he did. I didn't think he did either. And now Ron Washington is going to go out there against first base umpire Chad Fairchild. Said, yeah, he did step on the bag before he threw down there. Well, the infielder definitely thought he stepped on first. That's why he was trying to tag Adrian as he was going into second base and didn't consider throwing it back to first base. From here, it didn't look like he stepped on it, but let's see. Ah, touched it with his glove. Okay. Yes, he did. Never with his feet, but with his glove. And the uh, tag applied there to Beltran. So that'll be the uh, double play the hard way. And the conversation's still going on. Oh, what? Once he once he tagged first, he has to tag Adrian. Right. And it, it looked like Adrian, if he slid toward the outfield. Well, now, from that angle, it didn't look like he hit the bat. Let's take another look, then. His foot's not there. He didn't. Does he kick the base right here? Yes. He, he did. kicked the base All with right. his foot. Kick the base. There at, we go. at first, it looked like his glove. It wasn't the glove. It wasn't his foot the first time. But it was the foot the second time. Okay. Okay. Well, have to have to give Chad Fairchild credit. Yep. If that's what he saw, he's got better eyes than we do watching <laughs> watching the replay three times. We had to get just the right angle. We are not being recruited to be umpires. No. No. And you know, most of the, occasionally we'll find one where the umpire missed it, but we show a lot of them, and ninety percent of the time, at least the umpire's right, and he had that one right too. He sure did. So the leadoff walk is uh, down the drain. And uh, the double play took care of Beltre and Pierzynski. Jeff Baker at the plate. Base hit to left center his first time up. The 0-1. One ball, one strike. That hit for Baker in the uh, second inning. His first in four attempts against Liriano. Outside corner, one ball and two strikes. Well, Sanchez at first base obviously was aware that he had to touch the base, or that he had a better chance of turning the double play if he touched the base. Mm -hmm. So I guess he knew he didn't touch it with his glove. He knew he didn't have his foot on the first time, so he kicked it right at the end. And Jeff Baker caught looking at the third strike, and that'll do it for the Rangers. The leadoff walk is taken care of, and three up, three down is the result. On to the fifth we go. One nothing Pirates. On Fox Sports Southwest.
rolling in and on board. Plenty of servicemen from the DFW area and Patrick from Operations Once in a Lifetime. What was this all about? Uh, you know, it's just about uh, great once in a lifetime experiences uh, for service members and their families today. Uh, not only did the service members get to come out, but they got to bring their family, their kids, their wives, their husbands, things like that. And, you know, we're really blessed today. We actually have TV actors uh, who are actually raising really? money to do a film about PTSD called uh, Thunderroadfilm.com. And they're in the DFW area and they got to hang out with the guys today and learn a lot about what these guys go through on an everyday basis. And, Got to experience a once-in-a-lifetime experience all at the same time. There we go. You guys having a good time then, huh? All right. Keep up the great work. Good to have you out here. Way to go, guys. Appreciate it, Buzz. All right, Jim. Thank you. A great evening out at the ballpark and a pretty good yes, play sir. by Martin Perez. Starting that thing off against uh, Tony Sanchez, so out number one very quickly. And joining us in the uh, fifth inning, as always, here at home, our Fox Sports Southwest telecast, Mark McLemore. Mac, it seems like we talked last night talking about uh, a good pitching matchup and how well the pitchers were faring for both teams. We can just kind of replay what we said last night, couldn't we? That's exactly <laughs> what we're doing already. These two guys are uh, having outstanding games. Nelson Liriano's throwing extremely well. And so is Perez. Uh, yeah. you know, he's maybe not as sharp as he has been, but he's sharp enough. Yeah, we had Nolan on the third inning, and his comment was his Stuff may not be, he may not have as good a command as he has the last couple of times, but he said it's still pretty good. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, he's, for a young he, man. Yeah, he's still hitting his spots uh, most of the time, not not uh, being as aggressive in the strike zone as he has in the past, uh, in his past outings, but he's around the plate enough to make these guys swing the bat and put it in play. 2-1 pitch. Chopper to third. One nice convenient hop to Beltre. Two gone. Well, Perez, a couple of ground outs, and Mark McLemore joining us, uh, as always, the co-host of Rangers Live before and after the ball games. Darndest thing, and I asked I asked Nolan about this, Mac, and I'll ask you about it. Did you ever expect to see a Ranger team, at least in the near past or in the future, near future, struggle to score runs in this ballpark the way this club has? It never, times? never. Uh, Ranger, Rangers offense uh, struggling to score runs has never crossed my mind. Not here. No, definitely not here. Yeah. Uh, it, you can go on the road and have troubles, but for some reason, when we get back home, those bats come alive. That's going to be extra bases, and Gentry trying to run it down. A couple of wild Karens down there. Now going for third, Mercer, and the throw is cut off. Well, Mercer, three for three. And that's probably going to be a double and an error, I would guess. Gentry just had all kinds of difficulties out there with the double or triple carom coming off that padding. Well, it got, kind of hugged the wall. He couldn't tell where it was going to carom and what the angle was going to be. Well, Mercer double in the first, a single in the third, and now at least a double. And Adrian Beltre won't be recruited to be an umpire either. He's trying to do his best. To convince the umpire down there at third that it was a foul ball. <laughs> got it wrong. Mike Belinsky wasn't buying any of that. That is going to be a double and the error charge to uh, Craig Gentry. So two errors tonight for the Rangers. Man at third with two outs. That'll be up to Martin Perez to deal with Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon is one for two tonight. Infield RBI single last time up. Chops one foul. One and one. Andrew McCutcheon, a 324 hitter. 19 home runs, 77 runs driven in, and he has been on some kind of tear of late. And he continues that tear as he shoots one through the hole. That will score. Jordy Mercer from third base and the Pirates on McCutcheon's second RBI of the night take a 2 nothing lead. He's now watching McCutcheon in just these two games. What a good hitter he is. How well he's swinging the bat right now. He's hitting pretty much everything they throw up there. 
Had the ball that he hit 390 feet the first time up. A couple of base hits since then. Came into the game hitting 324. So two runs on seven hits now as uh, Martin Perez leaves a little calling card at first for Andrew McCutcheon. Marlon Bird has flied to right and popped to second. 0 for 2 tonight. 287, the average overall for Bird. And most of his work this year had been with the Mets. Pirates uh, got him at the end of August. He and John Buck, the catcher, came over from the Mets. Perez reading the signs. Perzinski flashing him out. The 0-1. Team trying to battle through. It has been a struggle for the young man in this ball game. Trying to find a way to close down this inning. This is inside. It's two and one out of Bird. Now, when you really look at it, it, it looks as though he's not pitching as well as he actually is. You know, because the Rangers are behind mm -hmm. two nothing, but he's only given up two runs. So that's not that's not the end of the world. It just looks worse than it actually is right now. And if you can get Bird and, and keep the lid on for, for just two runs, you, know, you still got five at bats if you're the Rangers to uh, do some damage. That yeah, yeah. whether they do or not, that's a whole different story. It's just as a pitcher, you have to put the cap on it right here. McCutcheon a pretty good lead. He is staying put though, and Bird rounds one wide a third and right between Andrews and Beltre. Both of them diving and coming up empty. A seeing eye grounder off the bat of Marlon Bird. They're now runners at first and second with two outs for Gabby Sanchez. So three consecutive two out hits for the Pirates. Couldn't place that one much better than that. Sure wasn't hit very hard. Two guys diving for it. Two guys can't get the glove on it. Mike Maddox out there to uh, have a little chat with his young left-hander, along with A.J. Przinsky. I think this is an area, too, where uh, Martin Perez has really come along, the ability to as he puts it, slow things down for himself. And gather his thoughts. Worry about executing the next pitch and really nothing else. Yeah, that's been a big part of his success, being able to slow things down and not let him start snowballing and going so fast that he can't really get a handle on it. And I know that's what Mike went out to tr really try to do and remind him of. Hey, slow everything down, control your breathing, and just go and get this one out. Mm -hmm. Sanchez, a ground ball and a fly ball out tonight. Makes that big slow breaking ball in for strike one. Pretty good indication by executing that pitch that he did slow things down appropriately. Being able to have the touch to drop that curveball in. McCutcheon the lead from second. He is trailed by Marlon Bird at first. 0-1 pitch. Base hit to left field. Gentry charging. McCutcheon coming around. The throw is off target. And scoring with a slide as McCutcheon down to third goes Bird. And the Pirates take a 3 to nothing lead. Well, that was a hard hit ball. It, it looked like the kind of play that if Craig made an accurate throw, he had a pretty good chance to get McCutcheon as well as McCutcheon runs. He had the ball before McCutcheon really ever got to third base right as he was touching third base. And the throw was a strong throw. It was just six or seven feet up the first base line. But this throws right on the money at home plate. It's an easy out at home plate. Just in a throw that wasn't very accurate. And Martin Perez thinking about what had happened instead of what he was supposed to do. He was not backing up. That ball had gotten by. It would have allowed Marlon Bird to score. That 
you're a pitcher, you've got to be all the way back to the backstop. Martin Perez became a spectator on that play. Now, first pitch to Russell Martin is long outside for ball one. And Martin Perez has got to be all the way over by the Ranger dugout, right behind Perzinski. There's no way he should be there. And that's just being upset about what you, the hit you just gave up instead of doing what your job requires. That pitch in the dirt, and that's going to allow Bird to score as it bounces away from Perzinski. And all of a sudden, things have spiraled out of control. It's 4 nothing in favor of the Pirates. The wild pitch for Perez. And Alexi Ogando loosening in a hurry now. Like that ball here right on top of home plate. Skidded right past AJ. Yeah. He didn't really have much of a chance. 2 0 pitch, extremely high. Three balls and no strikes. Martin, a single and a strikeout. Pirates have put three on the board here in the fifth inning. They have all come with two outs. Three and oh, a green light and a fly ball to right. That is going to do it. As Alex Rios handles it. But the Pirates have some two out thunder for Martin Perez. Three runs on four hits and one left. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Four nothing Pittsburgh. Southwest for Chevy hometown kids. It's not about the score. It's about the experience. You know, the Rangers need to do something about the score here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The bottom third of the order. Joey Butler is starting off against Francisco Liriano. And he takes outside for ball one. Butler, Gentry, and Martin. First three Rangers up. The Rangers now have gone uh, 16 innings without scoring a run. Butler a strikeout his first time to the plate. Ahead of the count, two balls, no strikes. Now 3 and 0. Joey patiently waiting out Loriano to see if he'll walk the leadoff man again. Did so with Beltre last inning. And he does. Four pitches and each one successively further outside. Nine. One on, nobody out. And uh, before Gentry comes up, let's send it over to Dana Larson for a Mazda game break. Dana.
All right, Dana, thank you. 49 home runs for Dave. Wow. That's quite a year. One on, nobody out. Here is Gentry. He takes the pitch outside for ball one. Craig had a butt face hit. Back in the second inning. He's got Alvarez, the third baseman, playing even with the bag, but that still gives him a lot of room to work with. He wanted to drop down another butt. He shows butt, pulls it back. It is two and nothing. Yeah, he's got plenty of room down there. When you've got this kind of speed that Gentry has, and that third baseman's playing even with the bag, that's not close enough. Mm -hmm. Not close enough at all. That, that third baseman's got to be in at the cut of the grass or on the grass in order to have a chance of getting Gentry. That bunt base hit he has it the first time. I don't think there's anybody more surprised than Tony Sanchez, who looks like a pretty good catcher, a pretty good young catcher. I think he thought he had the play all in front of him. No, he, <laughs> obviously he wasn't aware of how fast Jimmy right. really is. I'm sure he knows he's fast, but when you see him, when you actually see him, it's a different ball game. And there is a strike. Well, the first seven missing the strike zone, and uh, now Liriano able to get the count to three and one to Jenny. They almost have to take a pitch here, don't you, Mac? Yeah, you're down four runs. There's no question. You've got to. You're hitting eighth in the order. You you need base runners right now. Liriano ready to work. 3-1 pitch. Fastball and uh, Gentry, I think, had designs on butting that had it been a good strike. But he knew where Alvarez was. Alvarez went way in back of the bag. Well, the count is now full. And Gentry, the number eight hitter, trying to get aboard also. And Leonis Martin, the center fielder, waiting to be next. Loriano sets Butler the way from first. He's staying put, and the pitch fouled away. Max, did you happen to see the uh, reports of the argument that Buck Showalter got in today with Joe Girardi about stealing signs? I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, I, I was just, I was kind of amazed that uh, you know what I heard. You know, I, I I'm sure that that goes on from time to time. It just seems like a simple thing to stop by just change your signs. <laughs> Isn't that all you have to do? That's, that's really that's what you would think. It's, it's an easy thing to do. But, you know, I guess they made a big deal of it because I guess Girardi was saying something to his third base coach. Uh -huh. And I think I think I think they got into it a little bit. But as far as stealing signs, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed <laughs> to try to steal the other team's signs. Yeah. No, you don't want to get caught. <laughs> but you want it. That's what you try to do. And if you can do it, great. I did it for you. Yes. <laughs> no, that's why I look at it. It's, it's gamesmanship. It's part yeah. of the game. You need to give your signs in a way that the other team can't decipher them. Exactly. And if they can, more power to them. There, there you go. I mean, if you're giving, if you're going to give signs like this, you know, what's the other team supposed to do? Just cover up? Okay, we're not looking. Yeah. No. That's right. It's fun trying to steal signs. You, I mean, yes, you, you don't want to get caught by the, you know, the other team because. You know, one of your teammates is probably going to get hit, or you probably will. But, yeah. You know, yeah. that's just the gamesmanship. But, sure. you know, I, I'm sure Buck Walters got some guys over there that try to do the same thing. And if they don't, then they're not trying to do everything they can that's to win. That's right. That's their problem. Exactly. Yeah. I was playing in a triple-A game one time toward the end of my career. Mike Sosha was the catcher for the Dodgers. And we had this young kid on second base named Mike Bucci. And he was he was getting social signs and he wanted to relay the signs to me. And so he was standing at second base, making his arm signal <laughs> like signal like it's curveball. He's out there no. going like this. And I said to Sosha, hey, look, I see that, but I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to get the signs. I was afraid I was going to get one right up there. <laughs> Well, he was he was laughing himself. <laughs> I said, "Hey, Mike, that that was a great job of getting the signs, but we got to come up with a better way to signal the hitter." Yeah, because you weren't really tricking anybody with that. <laughs> That's pretty good, right there. You know, that's half the battle. Half the battle is getting them. The other half is being able to relay them. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed that there are a lot of guys that don't like to get them. 
Uh, Jane will be tagged out and on the play. Butler goes to second. He's there with two outs now for Ian Kinzer. We were getting the Yankee signs one time way back when at the old stadium when, uh, when Thurman Munson was catching for the Yankees. And Billy, Billy Martin was our manager and he was verbally signaling to the hitter what kind of pitch is coming. And this is, it's in, this is in the first inning. And Thurman Munson walked walked over to the bench and he said, I don't know what I'm doing to give the signs away, but if you keep doing it, someone's going to get hurt. <laughs> and they just went back to catch and Billy just started laughing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. But I get there. There is an art. There's an art to getting the signs, but just as big an art, maybe a bigger art in relaying them to the people that you want to have them. Right. There's no question about it. That's that's the, that's the big problem. Being able to relay it and, and not be suspicious about it. And when we're talking about stealing signs, simply a simple way of looking at it is if you're at second base, you can see the catcher's signs. And so if you can figure out whether he's calling a fastball or a curveball, then you try to let the hitter know what the pitch is going to be. And it obviously makes it much easier for the hitter to hit the ball. So you may be able to pick up the catcher's signs. We can do it here. I don't know what the signs are, but if you figure out what the signs are, but then you've got to let the hitter know. And that's when the other team can get an idea of whether you're relaying the signs to the hitter or not. I guess there's all kinds of different ways of doing it, Mac. I don't want you to give away any of your secrets, but <laughs> no, I can give mine away. You're now. never going to be at second base <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm fine now. Yeah. You know, relievers were easier because you know they like to come in and they don't like to think very much. So it's you know first, second, last, yeah. or first sign after the last pitch, and that's how they that's how they just went with it. Yeah. Starters, they could get a little bit trickier, and you know, so they had some some ways. And Jamie Moyer was probably the trickiest guy. I just said, hey, I don't even want to know. I'm, I'm not even going to try and figure <laughs> yours out. And he, he was just, you know, off the charts with his stuff. I'm like, if you've got to do all of that, you should probably just retire, Jaden. <laughs> really? <laughs> with Moyer, I, you guys could you could tell him what's coming with Moyer. And <laughs> still, for most guys, it wouldn't do that much good. Wow. He yeah, would do yeah. something. That, was, so if, that if was a lot. If you're at second base and you're going to relay the sign to the hitter, what might be a way that you would do it? Sometimes I would use my head. Sometimes I would use my hands. Uh, sometimes I would use my feet. Most of the time, I didn't even look at the hitter. Uh -huh. uh, I, you know, I'd look to the outfield, left field or right field, let him know, you know, location or off speed or, or fastball. Uh, so there were a lot of different ways, and it just depends. And when I did it, I did I did it a lot. <laughs> I had I had a different set pretty much for the guys that were right, the big guys right behind me. Uh -huh. So it wasn't the same for, you know, the guys hitting three, four, and five. It was it was different for each one of them. That way, you know, the other team wouldn't really suspect, hey, he's doing that. Ginsburg to left center field, coming on and gets by McCutcheon. Around third, coming in to score. Joey Butler and Ian Ginsburg with the RBI double. It's now a 4-1. to one. Fiber lead, and the drive spell is stuck. Well, the way, the way the Ranger luck has been going, I just assumed that McCutcheon was going to come in, slide, and make the catch. But he wasn't able to do it. Rangers pick up a run. Yeah, he got a great jump on the ball, so I thought he was going to be able to get there. He, he got there, just couldn't make the catch. And fortunately for the Rangers, he wasn't able to come up with it. And he gets his glove on the ball, it looked like. Just didn't, you're right, just didn't catch it. It looked like one of those ones, time you talked about where if you stay on your feet, it's probably an easier play. It might have been. Than going to the ground. Just reach down around your ankles and might have been. I don't even think that one was ankle high. Joe so Kinsler with his 59th RBI of the year. Now Elvis trying to pick him up. Elvis one for two tonight. A ground out and a single. Outside corner. One ball and one strike. Lariano back to the plate. Right out to the second baseman, Harrison. On to first, that'll do it. Rangers do score. They get a run on a hit, leave one. It is four to one Pirates. And Matt, thanks for joining us. We'll see you after the ball game on Rangers Live.
brought to you by the all-new Mazda 6. When you change everything, you change everything. The Rangers scored their first run since Sunday afternoon, their first extra base hit since the seventh inning of that uh, Sunday afternoon contest out in Anaheim. A 15-inning drought officially, and uh, Martin Perez now back to the hill. Gave up uh, three runs on four hits in the fifth inning. He will face the bottom third of the Pirates' order. Pedro Alvarez takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Alvarez has walked and struck out the two at-bats that he's had uh, against Martin Perez. Two and nothing. Perez to the wine and fires a knee high strike. Marcio Gondo continuing to loosen. He sat down when the Rangers were hitting. Now he's back up. 71st pitch of the night coming from Perez. Pulled foul outside first. It sounded like uh, Alvarez might have broken his bat. Now he's going back to get a different piece of lumber. That's how they used to break in the old days. Yeah. Down around the handle. Just put a little elbow in them. But you don't see many bats break like that. Nowadays they break in half, really. They used to break in a way sometimes where if you didn't have a good amount of bats, you're waiting for a bat order, you could just put a little nail in it, tape it up, and continue to use it for batting practice. New guys that put a little nails in the barrel and use them from the game. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the same reason, but two and two. Alvarez with that new lumber back in there. And Perez misses low. So the count has gone full. Alvarez leading off trying to get aboard Jose Tabata, the uh, left fielder. He is waiting in the on deck circle. 4-1 Pittsburgh. They about hit the Rangers 9-5 to tonight. And ball four is low and away. And it looks like uh, with Ron Washington going out to the mound, that may be the last hitter that Martin Perez is going to be allowed to face here this evening. So Perez, who really struggled through that fifth inning, got the first two outs very quickly and then let it escape from him. He gave up three runs on four hits. We'll hand the uh, ball to the skipper and uh, head back to the Ranger dugout. So Perez, chance for his seventh consecutive win. Not going to happen tonight. Alexio Gondo making his way in from the right center field bullpen. While he does, we will take a timeout. Back after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
Be Keith Benson, the Oak Cliff YMCA, because before the game, he was part of the $80,000 in grant the Texas Rangers Baseball Foundation handed out. The Oak Cliff YMCA got $10,000. Way to go, Keith. Way to go, YMCA. What are you guys going to do with the money? Well, we get the opportunity to rehab our baseball fields. We're going to take uh, two of our fields. We've got some sand we need to add on. We're going to add a uh, softball field so we can get into softball action with our young ladies. We're going to complete a couple of our dugouts, and we're going to buy a batting cage and a batting cage and a pit pitcher machine so that uh, really enhance the uh, fields and um, accessories that are out there. That's great. Well, we're going to come over and play some baseball yes, with sir. That's great. Come awesome. On. Well, congratulations. Money going to a well, uh, great cause, and uh, keep up the good work. Appreciate thank it. You. Buzz? All right, Jim. Thank you. Well, Alexi Ogando on facing Jose Tabata with one on and nobody out. Ogando's 0-1 pitch, a bunt, and Ogando will field and throw the sacrifice goes 1-3. And down to second goes Alvarez. He's there with one away. And Tony Sanchez coming up. Here are the numbers on Alexi Ogando for you. Well, the last time Alexi pitched on the road, he was throwing the ball great. His fastball was right where it used to be as a reliever. 96, 97 miles an hour consistently. Had a pretty good slider. It looks like he's definitely feeling healthy and throwing the ball great right now. Yeah, Alexi uh, got the win on Sunday's game out in Anaheim. He went an inning and a third. Gave up just one hit. Now, trying to prevent any more damage here in the sixth inning, Tony Sanchez goes after that first fastball and fouls it back. It's nothing and one. Sanchez, a double and a run scored. That came back in the third inning. Last time up, he tapped right back to the box. Ogando, a long look in, now has the sign he wants. And the 0 1 pitch he is on the way. Well, kind of popped out of the glove of A.J. Perzinski. 1 and 1. Sanchez, a 239 hitter. Handling the uh, catching chores tonight. He's now gone uh, 5 for 11 in his last several ball games, last five ball games. He waved that Ogando slider. It's 1 and 2. Alexi is ready. A check of second. Got him swinging. What a good sharp slider there. Sanchez strikes out. Two gone. And Josh Harrison, uh, scheduled hitter, is being called back. A great breaking ball. Broke down a little bit out of the strike zone. Got Sanchez to offer at it. Like Neil Walker swinging the bat in the on-deck circle. Now, Neil Walker, the uh, switch hitting second baseman. He started last night at second base anyway. He will come on here as a pinch hitter for Josh Harrison. Harrison went 0 for 3 all of his at-bats against Martin Perez. Now Walker's a much better hitter left-handed than he is right-handed. Right-handed, he's been up 73 times. He only has one extra base hit. A much stronger hitter left-handed. Maybe why he wasn't playing tonight. Walker at 260 overall. Three home runs. And the first pitch to him is a breaking ball that's low for ball one. Walker, though, mired in a 0 for 14 slump at the moment. Last three games, 0 for 11, but that uh, goes back even further. Ogando a check of second. And Walker lifts one in the air to pretty deep left field. Going back into the corner as Jetry stops right on the line and makes the catch for the final out. A little, uh, little hesitation and breathing for some Ranger fans. One left for the Pirates. We're going to the bottom of the six. 4-1. Buckle.
tonight's jackpot is worth $1,500 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Monty Gerner of Italy, Texas. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Monty Gerner of Italy is going to win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Alex Rio starting off. And uh, Francisco Luriano deals outside for ball one. Rios one for two tonight. A single back in the first. Stole a base. And uh, last time up, fly to center field. Looping foul on the changeup. And the count is even at one and one. Well, Rios currently batting at 282. Neil Walker stays in the ballgame and takes over at second base. And a line drive to center, but that is right at Andrew McCutcheon. One gone. Boy, Alex really swinging the bat well. And McCutcheon had him played perfectly. And now it'll be up to Adrian Belfry with one out. Adrian walked his last time up. Adrian really had stopped taking walks, too, it seemed like. He hadn't uh, had nearly as many as he'd had. And there's a base hit. That is up the alley. It is going to the wall. Cabot playing it off the bottom of the wall and strolling into second base with a one-out double is Adrian Beltre, his 28th two-bagger of the year. Well, Adrian hit the ball hard his first time up, hit a line drive to Marlon Bird in right center field. Then he walked. And he's got a pretty good pretty good pitch to hit and ripped it into the gap in left center field. He's had probably the best Ranger swings at Liriano today. Hasn't been fooled by the changeup. Been right on everything. So Beltre now in scoring position. One away. A.J. Prasinski. 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a double play. It's fisted and fouls it straight back. Nothing in one. A.J. at 278. After the 0 for 2 here this evening. Brzezinski has been on a pretty good roll of uh, driving in runs. He has 25 RBI in his last 34 ball games. One ball, one strike. And he's got Beltre out there at second, facing Liriano, who is allowed a run on six hits this evening. Big left-hander has uh, walked a couple. And he's also struck out four tonight. Next pitch. Little looper out towards short. Mercer backs up, makes the grab. That is out number two. So it'll be up to Jeff Baker now with two outs if the Rangers are to add another run here in the sixth inning. Baker one for two tonight. Singled his first time up, called out on strikes. Last time up in the fourth inning. Jeff Aaron tonight's play hitting at 287. That's the lowest his average had been since way back in April. First pitch is outside. Baker hadn't had an average under 287. He's back on April the 13th. Denmark Gomez, formerly of the Cleveland Indians, out there throwing. One ball, no strikes. And an off speed pitch. Catches the bottom of the strike zone. It's one and one. Luriano okays the sign. He checks Beltre at second base. Baker a rip and a miss. It's a ball and two strikes.
Baker waiting. Slightly open stance as Liriano sets. It's a foul ball down the right side, back into the seats. Still one and two, and Liriano still throwing pretty hard. Get that fastball up there in the mid 90s. If you can be crafty with a 95 mile an hour fastball, he's crafty. If you're crafty with a 95 mile an hour <laughs> fastball, you're also tough to hit. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. Another one two pitch he is coming. Check swing and oh boy, that was a good job of checking his swing right there. I don't know how he did it. You got strong hands to do that, don't you? Let's see. Yeah, he did. He stopped it just in time. No, two and two now to Baker. Tony Sanchez. Flash the signs out for Francisco Liriano. The left-hander is ready. Way outside, and the count has gone full. Well, oh, Baker can extend this inning. Got Joey Butler, Ranger DH, waiting in the on-deck circle. Liriano with the payoff pitch coming to Baker. Outside corner call strike three. You know, the tailing changeup and the fifth strikeout of the night is a big one for Liriano. One left for the Rangers. We're going to the seventh. 4 1 Pittsburgh. They have out hit the Rangers nine to six. Mercer and McCutcheon combined to go five for six with a pair of doubles and two runs, and they've driven in a couple. It's all Liriano making those four ran runs stand up through the first six innings. Jordy Mercer leading off the Pirates seventh against Alexi Ogando. Mercer quite a night going. He is three for three. A pair of doubles, a single. He has scored once. Yeah, he had the double that started the two out, nobody on rally in the fifth inning. Double, single, 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 a wild pitch. Three runs scored in the fifth inning. He got that started. The ball and two strikes now. Ogando came on in the sixth inning for Martin Perez. Came on with a man on and nobody out. Got a sacrifice bunt, a strikeout, and a flyout. Call strike three. Outside corner. And Mercer left standing at home plate. That is strikeout number two for Ogando. 
And painted that outside corner 95 miles an hour got him looking. I think Mercer knew it. No argument with the umpire just. Turn and walk back to the dugout. Well, one away. Now Andrew McCutcheon, who is two for three tonight. He has driven in a couple. The first pitch to him is breaking ball in the outside corner as Robbie Ross gets some work in, getting loose in the Ranger bullpen. McCutcheon, a pair of singles, a run scored. Brown and foul outside third. And the count goes to nothing and two. Justin Wilson, a left hander, loosening in the Pirates' bullpen. And as we mentioned last night, uh, the Pirates' bullpen has really been good. They have shortened ball games to uh, basically six inning games most of the time. McCutcheon fouls it away. And we'll try another 0 2 pitch. Clint Hurdle's club went through a four game losing streak, but they emerged from the mat last night with a 1 0 victory. Mainly on the strength of a team that scores a lot of runs by home runs, and then the bullpen makes their starters' efforts really stand up. Second best bullpen ERA in baseball. McCutcheon back in, taps the plate with the business into the bat, and Ogando sets. And another chop foul. Touching it. Tough guy to deal with for Ogando here in the seventh inning. Alexi reading the signs from Pierzynski. And the right hander is set. Inside and low. One ball, two strikes. And McCutcheon, a nine game hitting streak now. He has hit almost 500. 14 for 29. Check swing. Did he go around? No, he did not. The count moves to two and two. Warm night, but comfortable. The breeze drifting in from left center field. Nice crowd on hand to watch this middle game of the three game set. And McCutcheon well, came out of his shoes swinging a. That Ogando fastball. McCutcheon, another one of the uh, Pirates who has really fared well in interleague play. This is 18th game of the year against the American League. He came in hitting just about 360. And it's going to go up a little bit. He has run the count full now with one out. You can tell he's feeling good at the plate. He's, he's laying off close pitches. He's fouling off some really tough sliders. And when he gets his pitch, he's having some good swings at it. Payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Yeah, talked him right into that one. Yep. Apparently, you had to get him three and two and then throw him a curveball and then <laughs> you get him. Yeah, he's a good hitter. Yeah. Last year he hit 327 with 31 home runs. Not going to hit 31 home runs this year, but he's probably going to hit 327 again. That's actually one of the, the better sliders he had to hit. The other ones that he fouled off were much better than that. Just missed it. No back to back strikeouts for Ogonda to open up the seven. Now two outs, bases empty. Marlon Bird, one for three. And he waves at that high fastball, 0 and 1. Marlon had one of the four consecutive two out base hits in the fifth inning for the Pirates.
0-1 pitch. Bird playing in his 13th game with the Pirates since coming over from the Mets. He has hit safely now. 10 of those 13. Good rip at a fastball, but he found it straight back. And Ogando now with the advantage at a ball and two strikes. Bird back in there. Ogando okays the sign. And misses outside. Brzezinski flashing that sign out. The 2-2 pitch he is coming. And another foul ball. The bird very quick. Ranger fans remember uh, Marlon Bird in this ballpark. Be able to use alley to alley here and uh, really do some damage. A 305 career average in this ballpark for Bird. Fans getting behind Ogando and a little tapper down to first base. Baker takes it to the bag and that will do it. Oh, a one, two, three inning. Second time tonight the Pirates have gone in order. Stretch time at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. 4 1 Pirates. Dollar Hot Dog Day. Go to TexasRangers.com for tickets, or you can call 972 Rangers and get ready to eat all the dollar dogs you like for only a buck a piece. Now the Rangers coming to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. And they will face a new pitcher coming out of the Pirates bullpen. Justin Wilson, the 26-year-old left-hander, takes over. Joey Butler, who has walked and scored a run and struck out, takes high and outside for ball one. And pretty good numbers for Justin Wilson. He's 6-1. and one. Great ERA. Great opponent's batting average. Opponent's only hitting 192 against him. And last night, in last night's game, the Rangers saw a lefty that looks a little bit like Justin Wilson. Tony Watson was throwing yeah. 96, 97 miles an hour from the left side. Next night, 
a lookalike comes in doing the exact <laughs> same thing. Pretty good arms out there from the left side. Probably aren't a lot of teams who have two left handed relievers that each come in throwing 97 miles an hour like this. Well, you would hope it if they do, it's your team. Yeah, no kidding. Kind of important. Man. Two and two. Now the count to Joey Butler. Wilson, a California native, and went to Fresno State briefly. Pirates made him their uh, fifth round draft pick back in 2008. And he misses just off the outside corner. If the I, count has gone full. If I remember right, you said Tony Watson was an eighth round pick last night? Something well, like that. Um, I believe he was, yeah. So, the, I guess the point I'm getting to is both of these kids are throwing 96, 97 miles an hour. Neither one of them was a high draft choice. They both have great arms, though. And Joey Butler showing you a great eye as he draws the leadoff walk. Second time he has done that tonight. And uh, let's take time now for a Mazda game break once again. Here's Dana Larson. Dana. All right, Dana, thank you. Yeah, it would help if uh, the Rangers took care of business here. Greg Gentry, a late swing and a miss on the first pitch from Justin Wilson. Got yeah, looking back. Tony Watson was ninth round. Ninth round, okay. Yeah, uh, Wil Wilson coming up through the minor leagues was a starting pitcher, really, until he got to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. And then they put him in the bullpen. Not sure if he was throwing this hard as a starter. Fastball, strike at the knees. It is nothing in two to Gentry. Greg, a bunch single and a fly ball to left. One on, nobody out in the Rangers seventh. A three run Pittsburgh advantage. And uh, ball one just off the inside corner. 99 miles an hour. Man, bring the heat. Well, like we were talking about last night, Tom, this uh, Pirates bullpen has really been good, and you can understand why no, seeing these guys. Yeah, no kidding. Chopper foul off the bat of Gentry. We'll try it again at a ball and two strikes. And Brian Morris, right-hander, loosening in support of Justin Wilson. Left-hander sets, and the one-two. Got him swinging. All right, pitch cutting down and in, and Greg Gentry not able to do anything there. That is the first out in the seventh, and it will bring up Leonis Martin. Well, and you see almost exclusively 98-mile-an-hour fastballs, and then I'm not sure whether that was a cut fastball, maybe a slider. You see that pitch. That's pretty much going to be the result many times. Yeah, you can call it what you want. I think most hitters would tell you it's unhittable. Yeah, I don't care what you call it. I just know it's tough to hit. You're right. Well, Leonis Martin now trying to get something going. Jason Frazier loosening in the uh, Ranger bullpen. Martin tonight is grounded a second and grounded a first. 1 0 the count as Wilson sets. Like Leonis taking all the way, and that evens the count. Martin at 264 with the average. Joey Butler, a modest lead at first, and the pitch is low. Two and one now. Wilson last year uh, made his major league debut with the Pirates and appeared in nine ball games in September. Pretty good swing by Leonis Martin, but he fouled it straight back.
Wilson working to the number nine man in the Ranger order. Martin waiting the next pitch. Up the middle, right behind the bag at second is the shortstop. Mercer on to first to complete the double play. 6-3, and that takes care of the uh, leadoff walk to Joey Butler. The Rangers gone in the seventh. We're going to the eighth inning. It's the Pirates four, the Rangers one on Fox Sports Southwest. with the Arlington Chamber of Commerce Women's Alliance brought a hundred of her closest friends here in the ballpark tonight. They call it Tierra Tuesday. Beth, what's this all about? Darlington uh, Chamber of Commerce and this Women's Alliance, we're raising money for the, the Dr. Judith J. Carrier Scholarship and we wear tiaras and have a big time. We love the Rangers! Oh, all right, well, here's the bag. Thanks to the Tierra, someone back there. Anything else you'd like to say? Hey, we'd like to extend an invitation to all the women to come join us with the Women's Alliance, and let's cheer the Rangers to victory. Oh, we, go. we got, and hey, I don't think it's just women. They got one guy in the house right here, buddy, huh? Not bad. <laughs> That's happened. Some kind of mistake. Oh, that's a lucky mistake. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun about it. I bet you are. All right. Enjoy the game, guys. Appreciate it. Buzz. All right, Jeff. I kind of like Nazi's tiara. Did you see the tiara you had on? Yeah. Oh, good. Got a clash with his outfit, though. Jason Frazier into the ball game, and uh, Gabby Sanchez greets him with a solid single to center field on the first pitch that Frazier throws here in the eighth inning. Well, Sanchez with his second straight hit, a leadoff single in the eighth inning. It'll bring up Russell Martin. A good job by Ogando. Threw the ball really well. Pitched two innings, faced six hitters, struck out three of them. Jason Frazier, as you can see, appearing in his 52nd ball game. ERA of 255. And he has one on, nobody out. Martin, one for three tonight. Fastball right down through there for strike one. Russell Martin, 13 home runs, 51 driven in. Doing the majority of the catching for Clint Hurdle's club. Another one of those guys, a veteran catcher who's really made his presence felt with the relatively young staff for the Pirates. Pops the next pitch foul, and that'll be out of play. Baker and Przinski over to have a look, but it's well back into the seats. Nothing in two to Martin. Now Jason Frazier, who has uh, been on a pretty good roll, hasn't given up a run in a ball game in over a month, or exactly a month, I should say. A month ago tonight was the last time that he was scored upon. That was just a, a single run when he gave up. Since then, goose eggs. Asked to keep this at a 4-1 to one disadvantage for the Rangers. Give them two more opportunities. If they need them to uh, 
surpass the Pirates. Check swing. Pitch was high. Pruszynski coming up out of that crouch. Thinking about firing to first. Then he thought different. One and two the count. Frazier last worked on Sunday afternoon in Anaheim. Worked two-thirds of an inning. Reaching for the ball, Martin skies one to right center field. Into the alley goes Leonis Martin and makes the grab. That ball carried pretty well for Russell Martin just going out almost one-handing it. It was fairly deep into the right center field alley. But it is out number one. So Frazier now will deal with Pedro Alvarez with one on and one out. Alvarez walked twice tonight. Both those walks issued by Martin Perez. He was the Alvarez was the last hitter that Perez faced as he let off the sixth with the walk. Now we're going to have a uh, pinch runner for the Pirates. Starling Marte, who we saw last night, he is going to pinch run for Gabby Sanchez. Well, Starling Marte with that great base-stealing ability. He was the primary pinch runner for Clint Hurdle's club, and he is on now in the eighth inning with one out. He takes over as the runner at first for Gabby Sanchez. He's on the move. The pitch is swung on a miss. The throw is late. And Marte with the stolen base, and he didn't waste any time. And Marte, for most of the season, was a leadoff hitter for the Pirates. He's got almost 500 at bats. And I would say by the looks of that device on his right hand, the injury that's keeping him out of the lineup must have something to do with his right hand. Looks like an oven mitt. <laughs> but I, it's probably not. You don't think so? You never know. <laughs> There's no fingers on it. He wouldn't be able to grip the pot. <laughs> well, Marte now in scoring position. One out. Count of no balls and one strike to Alvarez. And the strike is dealt at the knees as Frazier comes back with a fastball. Right hand contusion, right ring finger sprain. Just reinstated from the disabled list. Still think it's an oven mitt. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. 0 oh, 2. Ground ball to the right side. Kinsler right on the rim of the outfield grass has it. Alvarez is out. On to third goes Marte. He's there with two gone. And Jose Tabata is the scheduled hitter, but apparently he's going to be called back. Of course, this time of year, you have almost unlimited numbers of pinch hitters available and Clint Hurdle is going to his bench he's going to pull off uh, Justin Morneau as a pinch hitter so at least for Jason Frazier it's somebody that he's uh, very familiar with Morneau of course started last night's game came over from the twins at the uh, end of August Alex Presley the outfielder went uh, to Minnesota in exchange Morno's probably going to go in and play first base anyway. No, Pruszynski out to talk to Jason Frazier just to remind him of uh, what they have had success doing, what they want to do against Morno. Of course, you've got a couple of bases open if you don't feel comfortable. Working to Morneau in this situation. Down by three and a runner at third with two outs. You can uh, be extremely careful with him. You've got a right-handed hitter and Tony Sanchez, the catcher, in the on-deck circle. So Justin Morneau, a 222 hitter with the Pirates. This is... 27 at bats. He's, you see, 0 for his last 14. Got off to a pretty good start 
after he came over to the Pirates, but has since really cooled off. And they're not even going to mess with him. They're going to go ahead and intentionally walk Morneau to put runners at first and third. And considering how things turned out last night, that I think Ron Washington is saying, look, we, we got burned last night. The only two-out hit with a man on came with a left-handed hitter in Alvarez last night. We had first base open there. So this, this time we are not going to mess with it. And the fourth wide one is dealt to Morno. So he draws the intentional walk. Runners at the corners. Tony Sanchez will indeed hit. And well, part of the uh, great weekend coming up. It's going to be a big one. Uh, Rangers and A's will be on Big Fox this Saturday. 11.30 Central Time. Start for that ball game. The middle game of that three-game series. Rangers and the A's on Fox this Saturday afternoon. Tony Sanchez, the hitters, a highly touted young player. He was the fourth pick in the draft a while back. College catcher from Boston College. But if you had your choice, I'm going to face him instead of Justin Morneau. Yeah. And first ball swing, he drives one to center. A play out there for Leonis Martin. Cruising back. And to his right, he handles it, and that will do it. Lead off single and an intentional walk. They are both left stranded. Bottom of the eighth coming up, 4-1 Pittsburgh. Twitter poll tonight. Remember, we asked you for your vote on the American League Rookie of the Year. 86% of you said the Rangers' own Martin Perez. That's no surprise. Having a great rookie campaign. The rest of the votes are pretty well evenly distributed. Archer, Iglesias, Meyer, and Straley. We're going to see most of those guys. Matter of fact, we're going to see everybody except Iglesias in the next uh, oh, 10 days or so. Archer and Myers down in Tampa Bay, and you see uh, Straley over the weekend with the A's. Jason Grilly has uh, come on now to take over. Grilly, 30 saves this year, and he was their closer until he had an arm problem, and uh, Mark Melanson took over, and Clint Hurdle uh, has not changed back. He just likes Grilly in that uh, setup spot. Felix P.A. is now in left field. Taking over defensively. The Grilly and Justin Morneau is at first. Grilly facing the top of the Ranger order. And Ian Kinzer looks at strike one. The Rangers had Grilly a while back. 
dad was a big league pitcher. Really had a had a good arm when he was with the Rangers. Low to mid 90s fastball and a hard slider. But you don't know about a guy until you give him a chance to be a closer how he's going to respond to it. He certainly responded pretty well. Made the all star team. Now let's take a look at the uh, AT&T U-verse Rewind, the only RBI so far for the Rangers off the bat of Ian Kinsler. A sliding attempt by Andrew McCutcheon. But that double played to Joey Butler with the only Ranger run of the game so far. Trying to at least get Kinsler aboard to start this eighth inning. 0-2 the count, and the pitch is hit hard. Up the alley and left center field. Long run over McCutcheon. And boy, that ball really hung up for him. And Andrew McCutcheon able to track it down for out number one. Last year as a setup reliever, Grilly struck out 90 in 58 innings. And that kind of performance earned him the opportunity to be the closer this year. He took advantage of it. Well, Grilly has the first out. Jason now a 36-year-old. Uh, with the uh, Rangers for part of the 09 season. Breaking ball is outside to Elvis. Andrews one for three, a single and a couple of ground balls to second base. 2009, Grilly appeared in 30 ball games for the Rangers, went two and two with a 478 earned run average. Two and oh now to Andrews. Feliz and Ross in the Ranger bullpen. Really sets and back to the plate he comes. Two and one. Well, the call strike. Steve Gurley pitched his dad pitched with uh, the Tigers and the Blue Jays back in the mid and late 70s. Popped up. Foul territory. Over to take a look. Sanchez. That about eight rows deep into the seats. And the count is even at two and two. Elvis trying to get something going. The Rangers, uh, with the exception of the inning they scored the run, and even that wasn't exactly a, a big outburst. They had a leadoff walk, and then two outs later, the RBI double. Pitch fouled away. Just have not been able to string together some base hits and get some guys on base to uh, run around like madmen. Hasn't worked that way. And really. Facing Andrews, trying to ensure that he doesn't get aboard. Two balls, two strikes. The next pitch got him swinging. Good breaking ball from Grilly, who gets his first strikeout. Two gone. Alex Rios now coming up. Good hard breaking ball down a little bit out of the strike zone. That looks like it could be his strikeout pitch right there. Rios, as you can see right there, one for three tonight. The single for him came back in the first inning. We talked about Grilly last year had 90 strikeouts in 50 innings. This year he's got 69 strikeouts in 44 innings. He's definitely a strikeout guy. It looks like he's kind of developed into it later on in his career in his mid 30s. Yeah, I think you know, he had the arm problems uh, during and after his time with mm -hmm. the Rangers and really wasn't at 100%. But once he got his arm healthy, I think he's figured out the best way to use his stuff. Sure has. 0 oh, 1 to Rios. Now a ball and a strike. 
signed with the Pirates organization after sitting out all of 2010. Grilly signed a minor league contract, went to uh, AAA in 2011 to start off, and then came up with the Pirates and had 28 appearances for him in 2011. There's a drive down the right field line. That is in. Bird over to cut it off. Rios going for two. The throw not nearly in time. And Alex Rios slides in with a two-out double. A couple more hits for Alex. And just trying to get back in the game. Down by three runs late in the game against a very difficult to hit Pirate bullpen. Pitch away, he went away with it. He yep. hit it well. Right in the outside corner, down and away. Good job of hitting right there by Alex. Boy, Rios, yeah, showing you how much territory he can uh, cover in a very short period of time. Now, after that two out double, we're going to visit to the mound from Ray Series, the pitching coach. Out there to have a chat with uh, Sanchez and with Grilly. Watson, the left-hander that we saw last night. Tony Watson loosening very quickly in that pirate bullpen. You would probably think that Clint Hurdle's looking ahead to A.J. Brzezinski with the left-hander if Beltre gets aboard. A.J. in the on-deck circle. So a brief conference, and now Beltre steps in one for two tonight. He has had three good at bats. He lined out sharply to right field in the first, walked in the fourth, and then doubled to left center field in the sixth. Big breaking ball. That is a strike to the outer part of the plate. Hitters always talking hitting, aren't they? <laughs> He's talking pitching now. One and one. Well, most hitters have a kind of latent desire to be a pitcher anyway. You can tell that when they warm up, <laughs> working on their knuckleball, their That's right. sliders, their delivery. Every hitter thinks he can pitch, and every pitcher thinks he can hit. And no one ever finds out because, well, I guess you find out if some. If some pitchers can hit, at least during the interleague, interleague play. Yeah. One ball, one strike. Beltre waiting, really set. Boy, Adrian coming out of his shoes at that off speed pitch. I think he was looking for something like that. He was right on it. It looked like a pretty good pitch to hit. Actually surprised he didn't hit it. A ball and two strikes. Rios the lead from second. High and tight. Now two and two. Beltre hitting at 318. Trying to pick up Alex Rios, who doubled with two outs here in the eighth inning. A little tapper foul. I don't know how in the world Beltre I don't either. reached that. That's one of these safe. Well, if the batter swings at that, he's going to be out. Somehow he did get a little piece of it. Thing is almost in the dirt and about a foot outside. And he's still able to get a bat on. Amazing. Really peering in for another sign for a 2 2 pitch. And the right hander has one to work with. And Beltre got fastball right on his fist and fought it off foul.
really out of the uh, Big East Conference. It is college ball at uh, Seton Hall. And a breaking ball is taken low. The count is now full to Adrian Beltre. Well, Beltre can get aboard. A.J. Brzezinski would come up as the tying run here in the eighth inning. Two pretty intense competitors right here with Grilly facing Beltre. This crowd of just over 36,000 now. Starting to get into this game. Payoff pitch. Line to right field. Dying in a hurry. It's down for a hit. Rios will score. Beltre with the RBI single. And the lead is cut to two. It is four to two. Pirates. That was a great battle. And another good at bat for Adrian, who's got a single, a double, a walk, and a line shot to right field for an out. So he's had good at bats all night long. Rangers put a run on the board, get the tying run to the plate, and that's going to bring Clint Hurdle out to the mound. High fastball, he fought it off, dumped it right in front of Marlon Bird for an RBI. And that coming on the heels of a streak that saw Adrian Beltre go one for 22 in his last uh, opportunities with runners in scoring position. But good to see, and Rangers really need Adrian to get back to where he is tonight. Now, well, pitching change underway. We'll take a timeout. Back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Get you up on the matchup for tomorrow, 1 o'clock, right here on Fox Sports Southwest. A.J. Burnett for the Pirates. Matt Garza on the hill for the Rangers. Burnett at 7-10. and 10. Garza at 9-4. and four. 1 o'clock for what the Rangers hope will be a rubber game of this three-game set. Tony Watson on for the second time in as many nights. Yeah, we saw him last night. Came in. We are already talking about him when Justin Wilson was pitching. You know, look. Somewhat similar when he comes right over the top with a mid 90s fastball or a 83 mile an hour slider. That we didn't see from Justin Wilson. Wilson worked the eighth inning last night, did not face Brzezinski. He had a uh, three up, three down inning, faced Gentry, Martin, and Kinsler in that eighth. And he misses high with a fastball. It is one ball and one strike. Brzezinski 0 for 3 tonight. He has struck out, grounded into a double play, and popped out for short. Rangers trailing 4 to 2. Brzezinski the tying run at the plate here. And he loops one down the left side. That's going to be back into the uh, first row of seats near the tarpaulin down there. And A.J. now down on the count 1 and 2.
Watson back to the plate. Way outside. I don't know how in the world Sanchez got a glove on that, but he did. Watson with the very lively arm, and sometimes he gets away from it. 28-year-old out of Sioux City, Iowa. We mentioned Pittsburgh's uh, ninth round pick back in 2007. Left-hander ready again. The 2-2 is on the way. Line drive, base hit down the right field line. Bird over to get it. Beltre at third being held up. Into second with a double is Przinski. And the Rangers have the tying runs aboard with two outs in the eighth. A.J. puts up some great at-bats against tough left-handed pitching. You got a guy throwing 96 miles an hour. He drops a slider. Looked like on the outside corner. A.J. just reached down and ripped that ball down the right field line. That wasn't a soft line drive. He ripped it. Now he's tough to pitch to, boy. And we're going to have a pitch runner for him. Angel Beltre. Out there to run for Pierzynski at second. He's carrying... The tying run in this ball game. Ball's down and away. Reaches out and just kind of flicks it and turns it into a rope. Well, here's Jeff Baker now with the tying runs at second and third. Baker one for three. And first ball swinging, he fouls back a fastball that was right on his fist. It is nothing and one. Baker singled in the second inning. Since then, has struck out twice, both times looking at a call third strike. Ranger bench up, getting ready to explode. Fastball strike, it's nothing in two to Baker. You know, the Rangers putting together a two out rally here in the eighth inning. Very much like the uh, Pirates did in their fifth. Rangers trying to counter that with one in the eighth. 0 2 pitch. Another fastball on his fist. Yeah, Baker staying alive. Clint Hurdle, who's Pirates with a win last night, assured themselves of a winning season for the first time since 1992. That was their 82nd win last night, and Rangers trying to win their 82nd here tonight. They have to do it in comeback fashion. No balls, two strikes. Watson okays the sign. And the left-hander's pitch. Another foul off. Now Baker having a good at bat here against Watson. Very much the way that Beltre did against Jason Grilly before he was able to single. They're just trying to have the same kind of rally the Pirates had in their three-run inning. Two outs, nobody on. Trying to get four straight hits. Pulled foul on the left side. Well, he's pounding him with fastballs and took something off. Jeff was just a little bit out in front of it. Pretty good spot to work with. The trigger was pulled just a shade early. Still 0-2. Got him swinging. A high fastball at 94. Baker strikes out. The Rangers come up with a run on three hits, but strand two. So we're going to the ninth inning here in Arlington. It's now the Pirates four, the Rangers two on Fox Sports Southwest.
top of the ninth, 4-2. The Rangers still with some work to do. We'll be here after the game to break it all down with the Eastern Rangers Live postgame show. Mark McLemore and myself will be breaking this one down from top to bottom. Hopefully we'll be talking about a Rangers come from behind victory in the ninth inning. Jim Knox will be working the clubhouse, and of course, we'll get you ready for the finale of this three-game series. Matt Garza going to the hill, looking to salvage a game and get the Rangers back on track, guys. All right, Emily, thank you. Now, Robbie Ross has entered the game now. We'll pitch the ninth inning. Robbie uh, had a little bit of a meltdown the other day in, uh, in Oakland. Gave up four consecutive hits and four runs without retiring a hitter. This is his first opportunity to work since that game on the fourth. And he's working to a new catcher now as Giovanni Soto comes in and takes over behind the plate. No, Ross facing the uh, top of the order. Neil Walker, the second baseman, leading things off. Me, Walker, Mercer, and McCutcheon against Ross. Walker, 0 for 1. He came in out of the, as a pinch hitter. In the uh, sixth inning, flight out to left field. Ross ready, the 1-1 one, one pitch. Now 2-1. and one. Mark Melanson, the closer for the Pirates. is ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. Little pop-up foul that will reach the seats. And it also evens the count now at two and two. We're talking about Walker when he pinch hit. He's had more trouble against left-handed pitching this year. He's hitting just 233 against right-handers, hitting 260. Ross okays the sign, the 2-2 pitch. Now a full count. Robbie Ross with the payoff pitch. Way inside, ball four. He lost him for the leadoff walk. And now Jordy Mercer will come up. And Ron Washington on his way out to the mound. He wants some help coming in from the bullpen. So Ross unable to get the first hitter that he faces. And it will be the last hitter that he faces here tonight. A leadoff walk. And with Jordy Mercer coming up, we're going to have Joaquin Soria coming in from the bullpen. So another timeout on the pitching change. Back after this and a 4-2 Pirates lead.
Fox Sports Live. Joined by Donovan McNabb, Gary Payton, Andy Roddick, and Carissa Thompson. They'll bring you everything you need to know about the world of sports. Fox Sports Live airs nightly on Fox Sports 1. That's not good. Sacrifice bunt. Nobody covering first. Looked like a pretty harmless play to move the runner to second. Luckily, Soria didn't just turn and throw the ball. Yeah. That would have really been a problem. Ewan just never got over there to cover first. You have a guy, too, and Jeff Baker that doesn't play first all that often, so you know his reads are going to be different than uh, Mitch Moreland's. Yeah. So, first and second, nobody out. And what's going to be a base hit and a swing and a miss by Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon, two for four tonight. A pair of RBI singles. He has scored a run. He's also flying to deep left field and struck out. Now Walker at second, Mercer at first. Soria's 0-1 pitch he is on the way. And in Minnesota, the Twins came up with uh, two in the bottom of the eighth inning, and they take a one-run lead to the ninth against Oakland. No, Red Sox beat Tampa Bay to go 30 games over 500, and Clay Buckholtz got the win to go to 10 and 0. Coming back off the disabled list, they get their best pitcher back for the stretch run. Not that they have to worry about the stretch run; they're pretty much home free. But for the postseason, Joaquin's numbers on the season: opponents only hitting 179 against him. Buckholtz now is 10 and 0, been on the disabled list for quite a while. Two and one, the count to McCutcheon. Ground ball, base hit to right field. Walker around third being waved home. The throw from Rios is cut off. And Walker scores on the RBI single by McCutcheon. And the Pirates have a 5-2 to two lead. Well, McCutcheon, boy, he, he puts the bat on the ball. He found a hole right there. Ian was shading him up the middle. And he hit the ball to his to our right of second base in the right field. Not hit all that hard. Pitch down and away. Kind of hit it off the end of the bat. But that kind of a pitch with that kind of approach. With Ian playing right near second base like that. You can see the huge hole that he had to shoot for. Well, still first and second. Still nobody out. McCutcheon now with three RBI tonight. And Marlon Bird at the plate is one for four. McCutcheon has three separate singles to drive in a run each time. Bird singled in the fifth and came around to score in that frame. Pirates now with a dozen hits against five Ranger pitchers. A ball and a strike. Soria, a long look in. Now the right hander's ready. A check of second. Another look back there. And he misses outside and low. It's two and one. McCutcheon at first. He is trailing Jordy Mercer. Pitch outside, it's three balls and a strike. Soria not missing by a lot, but missing by enough. And he has fallen behind at three and one to Bird. Bird to be followed by Felix PA. The three one. Skied right behind second base. Infield fly rule is in effect as Ian Kinsler able to handle that. One gone and PA coming to the plate. Mike Soria took just enough off that 
3-1 pitch to get Bird out in front. Yeah, I got him to reach for it a little bit. Get it toward the end of the bat. Felix P.A. came on to play defense in left field. P.A. Numbers for him to 11 the average. Just a couple of RBIs, but limited playing time with the Pirates this year. Takes a fastball inside for ball one. B.A. 0 for his last 11 trips to the plate. This is 18th game since joining the Pirates on the 21st of August. And ball two is inside. Joseph Ortiz, Michael Kirkman, a pair of left-handers, loosening in that Ranger bullpen. A 5-2 Pittsburgh lead. And a ground ball foul off the fists of PA. Two and one. Soria entered the ball game after the leadoff man walked against Robbie Ross. And Washington brought uh, Sori in, then a, a botched sacrifice bunt attempt by the Rangers. And nobody covering first. Put a couple on with nobody out. Then Andrew McCutcheon had the RBI single. Pop up to Bird for the first out, and Soria now working with a 2 2 count to Felix PA. Time called as Soria and uh, Soto taking a little time to get together on the sign. Got him swinging. It's a little off. Looked like yeah. a change up that slow third ball. Well, a very big out number two. And now Soria will deal with Russell Martin. Looks a little bit like you, Darvish's slow curveball. Darvish is even slower than that, though. Yeah, say it was a little How bit do you faster. throw it any slower than that? <laughs> I don't know. Get it to do that. <laughs> Martin, one for four tonight. He fouls off that first pitch. He got a pretty good chunk of Giovanni Soto. You, Darvish, and Derek Holland, Joy Butler, Jim Aducey. And company. Soria back him on top of the hill. No balls and a strike to Martin. Foul back. And Soria now with the 0 2 count. Mercer, the runner at second. Andrew McCutcheon at first. Two outs, an 0-2 count to Russell Martin. Got him swinging. That's a pretty good pitch the today. on that hook and back-to-back -back strikeouts. The Pirates come up with a run on a couple of hits they strand to. Bottom of the ninth, the Buckler, Gentry, and Martin. Martin, the Rangers trailing by three.
Ford Ford Tough sales event at your Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, U-verse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. And by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Five to two, the Pirates uh, adding a very big run in that top of the ninth inning. And now the uh, closer for Flint Hurdles Club, Mark Melanson, who picked up his save last night. On in relief here tonight and looking for another save. It would be his 13th of the year. Yeah, he's been just about untouchable with 085 earned run average. 63 innings, he's only given up one home run. And we could see why last night he threw what looked like a real heavy sinker. And when the Rangers made contact, it was kind of a weakly hit ground ball. Good, did a good job in the save last night. David Murphy's going to try to start the Rangers off with something here in the ninth. Looks like it'll be Murphy followed by Moreland looking into the on deck circle. So Ron Washington going to his left handed. Cadre from the bench. Murphy 221. He has 13 home runs, 43 driven in. Rangers need some base runners here in the ninth inning. And Melanson fires a belt high strike. It is nothing in one. Murph did not have an at bat last night, although he took over for Jim Adusi after. Aducey uh, had started in left field and hurt his bicep. Got a cramp in his bicep when he struck out. Murphy came on defensively and then was pinch hit for in the eighth inning by Craig Gentry. No balls, two strikes. Chopper right down the first baseline that veers off into foul territory. And we will come back and try it again. Ranger pitch hitters have been doing a great job this year. They are leading the American League in hits. And they're second in batting average. Hitting 291. And the pitch inside. One ball, two strikes. Ranger pinch hitters this year are 30 for 103. Murphy waiting, pinwheeling that bat around. Melanson back to him. Out of play down the left side. Murphy this year, four for ten as a pinch hitter. Again, the one two. Two and two. And Murphy having a good at bat. Yep, gotta have some base runners. Lanson likes to throw that 93 mile an hour pitch and make it cut into the left hand hitters. A little movement makes it really tough. Right hander back to Murphy. And Murph just spoiling a pitch down and away. Pretty good job. Melanson had him reaching and off balance. Pretty tough pitch to foul off. Three and two. Good curveball and excellent location. Two balls, two strikes. Melanson to the wind. Got him swinging. And the out will be recorded at first. As Murphy uh, went after a pitch in the dirt, Melanson gets the strikeout. That is one away. And Mitch Moreland now will pinch it for Craig Gentry. Well, both times, the 3 2 pitch was a curveball breaking straight down. First one was borderline strike. That went out of the strike zone, but he still got David to swing at it.
The one out, here is Mitch. Long and stepping in a 239 hitter. You can see with the 22 home runs, 57 RBI. Melanson's first pitch. Fastball for a strike. Now the 0 1. Couldn't check his swing. And Mitch now in an 0 2 hole. Moreland, 1 for 6 this year as a pinch hitter. That one, that two run home run in Chicago about a month ago. Got him swinging. Yeah, that's a good pitch. Throwing a lot tonight. Well, Melanson has struck out both pinch hitters. Murphy and now Moreland. Two away at Leonis Martin coming up. Goes straight down. Yep. That's that old 12 6 curveball you hear talked about. Yeah, that's a good one. Hard to throw, hard to hit. Well, the last hope for the Rangers at least to keep something going here in the ninth inning. Leonis Martin, and he takes inside for ball one. Martin tonight has grounded out. All three times that he's come to the plate, once into a double play. Melanson struck out 60 in 63 innings and only walked eight. Two balls, no strikes. Martin waiting as Melanson eyes and signs the 2-0 pitch. He's taken all the way, and it's a knee-high strike, 2-1. and one. The wind and the 2-1 pitch. Broken bat looper up the middle. That is going to be off the glove. Well, the shortstop Mercer, he would not have had a play anyway. And the Rangers have life in the ninth inning as Leonis Martin aboard with a two out single. Well, he got sawed off, but he'll sacrifice a bat for a hit anytime. He ran that cut fastball in on the fists. Well, it's running a relay race with a baton right there. <laughs> Stick with it. There he goes. Discarded about halfway down there. Well, the Rangers need one more runner, base runner, to get the uh, tying run to home plate. And Ian Kinsler charged with getting on base here. Martin gone. He will uh, take second base on defensive indifference. First pitch to Ian Kinsler in for a strike. Ian two for five in his career against Melanson. Melanson uh, has worked for the Yankees, the Astros, and uh, most recently before the Pirates in Boston. Rangers roughed him up in Boston uh, last year. Matter of fact, I think that was the game they got him sent to the minor leagues. Yeah. After. Yeah, the Rangers scored a ton of runs in that series against the Red Sox. In the dirt, one ball, one strike. Ginsler had the RBI double in the fifth inning. Drove in his 59th run of the year. Rangers now with 10 base hits tonight. They have been out hit 12 to 10 and outscored 5 to 2. Melanson trying to lock down the Pirates victory here tonight. Rangers trying to stop that. The 1 1. Outside 2 and 1.
Ginsburg, that look of determination on his face as he awaits the 2 1 pitch. Outside, three balls and a strike. Well, he had now one wide one of getting aboard and bringing Elvis Andrews to the plate as the tying run in this game. And Clint Hurdle getting a little bit uh, uneasy as he talks to Ray Surridge, the pitching coach. Three and one with two outs. Melanson ready. And Kinsler a drive to left center. It's down for a hit. Around third, Martin will score. And Kinsler with another RBI base hit. This is a two-out single. And it's a 5-3 to three lead for the Pirates. And Elvis Andrews coming to the plate as the tying run here in the ninth inning. And it's 11, the 11th base hit for the Rangers. The Rangers had men on second and third in the eighth inning. And on second would have been the tying run. There's that cut fastball that cuts right to the middle of the plate. Ian puts a good swing on it and rips that double to left center field. Trying to extend the rally here with two outs. Now Elvis comes up with Kinzer at first and two away. Rangers down by a pair. Elvis one for four tonight. Out in front of that pitch and cues it right off the end of the bat. No balls and a strike. I think Elvis might have been a little bit over, over amped for that swing. Yeah, he doesn't want to be thinking home run right here. Although he's hit a couple in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. He'll take a base hit though. Melanson, a check of Kinsler. And he drops that big hook in. Well, now Elvis down to the final strike available to the Rangers. Nothing and two. Kinsler not being held closely at first by Morneau. Melanson ready, the 0-2 pitch. Ground ball, wide a third, into left field, a base hit. The Rangers have the tying runs aboard, and they have the winning run coming to the plate in the person of Alex Rios. The last inning, there were two outs and nobody on. The Rangers got a double, a single, and a double. One run, men on second and third, couldn't get any more. Today, it was two straight strikeouts for Melanson, and now three straight singles made it a little bit interesting. Ray Surridge going to go out and uh, give the bullpen time to get warm. And talk to uh, Melanson and Tony Sanchez. Well, Melanson's thrown 23 pitches to get two outs here in the ninth inning. Well, with Ginsler at second, Andrews at first, Alex Rio stepping to the plate two for four tonight. He is single, he has doubled, and he has scored a run. Well, you'd love to see Adrian Beltre get a shot here in the yeah, ninth inning. Definitely. Adrian in that on deck circle. Melanson ready to go as Rio steps in. Ranger bench right up on the top step. Pitch inside almost hit him. Ball one. The Rangers looking out toward that scoreboard. They see the Minnesota Oakland score up there with the Twins winning 4 to 3 tonight. That game is a final. On the board in plain sight for everyone. 1 0 pitch coming to Rios. Now, time call. Washington trying to will his club through this ninth inning, and Clint Hurdle working that gum over pretty good. 
Outside, two balls and no strikes. Well, you get on now, then it's the time run goes to second base. You don't need an extra base hit, just need a base hit. Brian Morris, who had been up earlier in the game, back up and throwing in that pirate bullpen. Melanson's 2-0 pitch. Fouled away to the right. Oh, a good rip by Alex Rios. He'd love to have a mulligan on that. Yeah, that's right in the center square. A two and one. Melanson nods his head yes. And he's going to turn around and throw to second. Yeah. And kids were just kind of walking off the second. He was going to go to third. There's no reason to go to third right now. You're down by two runs. Let the hitter hit. It's like a wasted base. Kinsler and Andrews. Second and first. The 2 1. Up the middle by the dive and shrugs back into center. Kinsler will score. Elvis around to third. It is a 5 to 4. Pirates lead as Alex Rios comes through with the RBI base hit. And Adrian Beltre will get a chance here in the ninth. The Rangers doing some two out hitting the last two innings. It was three straight hits last inning. This inning, it's four straight hits. Need one more. So Rios with the RBI single, his third hit of the night. And Adrian Beltre coming up with the tying run at third, the winning run at first, and two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. They got a great base stealer at first base, too, to add a little drama. With a winning run at second base. First pitch to Beltre. Right down the middle for strike one. Two for five, Adrian Beltre against Mark Melanson. One of those two, a home run. Andrus, the tying run at third. Alex Rios, the winning run at first. The 0-1 pitch. Late swing and a miss. It is 0-2, and, and again, the Rangers down to their final strike. Beltre has hits in each of his last two times up there. A double and a single. Melanson with the 0-2 coming. Got him swinging. Melanson with three pitches. Sends Adrian Beltre and the Rangers back to the dugout and to the clubhouse. As he holds on, the Pirates win it 5-4. And they have taken the first two games of this series. Pirates... We're out hit tonight, 13 to 12 by the Rangers, and a furious ninth inning rally comes up a run short for Texas here this evening. So five to four, the final, and uh, we'll be back to wrap things up. Emily Jones and Mark McLemore right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. 